Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama is usually described as spectacular, beautiful. But today, it's just plain wet. As we welcome you to NBCSN's coverage of the Verizon IndyCar Series, and this is the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. It's round four of this year's IndyCar Championship, ready to go on a very challenging day, to say the least. And the rain has been looming for several hours. Everybody knew this was coming, and it just started about half an hour ago and it is going to continue for quite some time. So like I said, a testing day here in the south for the Verizon IndyCar Series. Yes, wet, weathers, uh, wet weather tires on all of the cars, as you can imagine. 90 laps is the distance or two hours, whichever comes first. And at the slower pace, more than likely, it will be a timed race. So as everybody gets ready, there are some important words to be said. Let's go down trackside for the command. Alabama race fans, are you ready? It's time for those most famous words in all of sports. Here to give the command is actor and producer, Channing Tatum. Drivers, start your engines. Good to hear the engines fired. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie, along with Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy. Paul said that he saw uh, Channing Tatum before. He's not going to apply for Magic Mike 3, but we may uh, we may talk further about that. Good to have him here. By the way, he's from Callum, Alabama, just up the road. So that's why. That's one thing that Barber Motorsports Park does a great job of is getting Alabama celebrities, whether it be from stage or screen or sport. They do a really nice job. But PT, I want to start with you first. Conditions like this. When you were driving, did you relish this? Did you look forward to this kind of a day or you were kind of like eh, not so well I was always one to say let's just go race and get it going but I I was never the greatest of rain drivers I never had great results in the rain but there's some guys out here like Pagano and Bordet Will Power yeah Will Power guys have raced in Europe Wickens got a lot of experience in the rain so watch out for these guys today because I think they're really good Townsend you told me uh, from your memory you didn't ever win an Indy Lights race in the wet what were you like in sports car driving in the wet did you enjoy it yeah I've had some good runs in sports car but the thing about the rain is that there's no such thing as just rain or dry it's mixed levels of moisture on the track what I love about what we're about to see today is the cream will rise to the top by that I mean none of these teams drivers or engineers have any experience with this 2018 body kit in these conditions so they're gonna have to figure it out on the fly find the grip choose the right setup and we're gonna see the best of the best come out today now although you are used to and we are used to the side-by-side -side start we have heard from race control that it will be a single file start today Joseph Newgarden getting just his third IndyCar career pole position his very first here at a track where he has been so so successful he's won two of the last three years and he just pipped his uh, pole master of a teammate Will Power who has dominated qualifying sessions here over the last eight years and it all changed yesterday. Marco Andretti is inspired by his good qualifying position and do you know what Paul Marco Andretti said from that seventh spot he could possibly win. We'll see. Absolutely. That's the best qualifying he's had in years since 2014. Max Chilton and Kimball this is a good, good spot for them. They've almost made it into the top 12. Ray Hall had a bad qualifying session. Watch for him to try to charge forward in the rain. And then all the way back, Tony Kanaan, a master of big moves on the start from the back of the field. This is not the first time Tony Kanaan has started at or near the back of an IndyCar race. Look for big things and a lot of hunger on the opening lap. All right, time to go down to pit lane and we join our group. We kick things off with Marty Snyder. Hey, Marty. Hey Lee, let's set the stage for you and Townsend mentioned it a moment ago. Brand new car for the Verizon IndyCar Series this year with less downforce that, by the way, nobody in this field today had any practice with in testing earlier this year. Now Penske did do some laps in the rain, but Elio Castroneves was behind the wheel of the car. That was actually here in testing a few weeks ago. So the drivers have no idea what to expect this afternoon. In fact, the front row drivers I talked to a moment ago, Joseph Newgarden and Will Power, the Penske teammates told me they're going to be very cautious and patient very early in this race and they should have an advantage for starting up front. The unpredictability today is off the charts but the one thing that we know will happen Kevin Lee 
this is going to be entertaining. It's going to be entertaining, Marty, and might we say a lovely day for a motor race. As you look at row number two with Ryan Hunter Ray starting in the fourth position and Sebastian Bourdais right in the inside. Keep in mind, Hunter Ray won a wet race here in 2014. He said, I'm just happy that I qualified up near the front, so there's a, maybe a little bit less spray if you're mid-pack. Now, Sebastian Bourdais, like Marty was talking about, is very concerned. He said, I have no idea whether to soften up, whether to add wing, whether to take out wing. This is a total unknown for this event today. Katie? Kevin, while Simon Pagano's teammates start from the front row, he's going to be playing catch up from ninth today. And Simon told me it hasn't been just a bad weekend for the 22 team. It's been an entire bad year because they have yet to even finish inside the top 10. And when I asked him about his setup here at Barber, he said he just can't find one that works for him with this new Universal Aero kit. And he said now with the rain in the mix, well, he's in for a grueling day of battles, Robin. Tony Kanan was having a bad weekend before qualifying started. Well, guess what? He spun leaving the pits and hit the wall, so he starts in the back. And like Townsend just said, you want to have some fun? Keep your eye on car number 14, A.J. Foyt's driver, the most experienced guy in the field. He passes more people in the last 10 years probably than anybody. And in the rain, he really likes it. So if he doesn't pass five or six cars, I think Mr. Foyt's going to be unhappy, and so will T.K. Lee. And Robin, an uncharacteristic mistake in qualifying yesterday from Tony Kanan as he spun the car coming out of pit lane, trying to go for one. One more fast lap so he was a bit frustrated with himself as we're going to try and tiptoe our way through the onboard shots for you and with thanks to total performance engine oils graham rahal will give us this view of course spray is going to be a huge factor zach veach continues to go from strength to strength and the group 1001 onboard camera and car for andretti autosport will provide this view today as young zach is coming off a career best Ooh, this looks a little ugly doesn't it and that is thanks to Verizon. That is the 27 of Alexander Rossi. And by the way, I want to inform you about Verizon streaming. You can go inside IndyCar all season long by downloading IndyCar Mobile exclusively from Verizon, America's best streaming network. Oh, you're going to hear a lot of that. On throttle, off throttle, on throttle, off throttle. Lucas Oil gives us this view of James Hinchcliffe who made his first Firestone Fast 6 in qualifying yesterday in quite some time, was buoyed by that, and the strength of Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports continues to impress in season 2018. And there is a second Verizon onboard camera, and that is for the man who will start right behind his teammate Joseph Newgarden. This is Will Power, a guy who won back-to-back -back years here at Barber Motorsports Park, and he loves this place. Feels as though it's very European in its nature. The undulation and the challenges really suit him. And Joseph Newgarden will give us this view as well, also thanks to Verizon. Been a great start to the season. Joseph Newgarden yesterday became our fourth different pole winner, and there have been three different winners from the three races so far. The streets of St. Petersburg, Sebastian Bourdais, Joseph Newgarden in Phoenix, and then of course last weekend it was Alexander Rossi as the youngster. Matthias Leist is a little late off pit road, but he finally gets the A.J. Foyt car rolling. About a half a lap to green, so Leist has a chance to catch around. And if he does catch the field, guys, it'll be a huge advantage because he'll be doing so at speed and have an ability to get temperature in these Firestone rains, which, frankly, if he can catch the tail end, he can pass several cars just by virtue of being the first one to get a sense of the field. You see the lights off on the Honda safety car. Oriol Servia, by the way, is behind the wheel. The race, is, the, the lap has counted, so under caution, this first lap, just to give the drivers an extra circuit and the safety car has gone and we are ready to go here in Birmingham, Alabama, the Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Let's see what this opening green lap really looks like. Tremendous amount of spray. You see the guys in the back, like Dixon, back way off. Gave himself some room as he goes side by side with Hunter Ray in turn one, but I think they're all gonna get through here clean. Nice, clean first corner and let's go racing. Sebastian Bore already starting to look at Will Power. Here comes Alexander Rossi, Marco Andretti, James Hinchcliffe, Simon Pagano, Zach Veach, Graham Rahal taking the wide line. And looking further back, I saw Robert Wickens taking the high line, rim shot around the outside. When there's this much water on the track, oftentimes there's Wickens in the red and black car. Oftentimes offline is the best grip. Three wide now in turn five. Jordan Andrew. King going really, really wide in five. Of course, the British driver is very much used to these kind of conditions. 
We'll see if he can revel this afternoon. Everybody looking for a clear spot, clear vision. You see them all fan out on the straightaway. They're all looking for a space to run and not be in the spray. Varying lines. Everybody's got a different angle of attack in the corner, outside, inside. Came into mellow there with Max Chilton. And you see that spray on the straightaway. It's difficult to see, but the longer we go here, we get a few laps, and this water's going to disperse, and the, it'll, it'll start to form a little bit of a line as long as it's, the rain is, is not get, doesn't get too heavy. Remarkable patience from the entire field to wait for the water to get out of the way and for the tire temperature to build. But now, look at Marco. Look Marco, at Marco Andretti on his, a move on his teammate. He's, gonna, he's got the preferred line on the outside now, but look at that. I like it when you hear Marco Andretti talk with enthusiasm and optimism, and he said it straight after qualifying yesterday. Hey, this is a good qualifying. I feel I can win the race from here. This is the view from Alexander Rossi's car. Marco looking on the outside. He's going to try to do an over-under here as we come around this corner and up over the hill, try to get a run. A little bit of a lift from Rossi. And you can hear just how much the drivers have to respect the throttle. Rossi barely getting to full throttle at any point there. Oh, oh there you go. There you go, on the power sideways. So you can see how hard it is to put the power down. These guys, they're the best drivers in the world. And today, they're going to have to show it and earn their money in these kind of conditions. Look how Joseph Newgarden has left his teammate Will Power behind, though. Newgarden's bolted. And now Sebastian Bourdais in that bright yellow Sealmaster car for Dale Coin Racing with Vassar and Sullivan. He is now starting to press. And this oh. is Andretti has gone. Marco has spun. He definitely was putting pressure on his teammate, looking for a way around. He probably found a bad spot. And look at he's stuck there in the grass and got going. But it cost him a lot of positions. That was down in the museum corner, which is the lowest elevation here at Barber. So all this water tends to flow down to that area. There were some puddles at the start, but up front, Newgarden has the benefit of perfect visibility. Newgarden had a lot of time as a junior in, in Europe, raced in Europe a lot before he came back to the States and made his IndyCar home here. But so he's got, he must have some rain experience racing in the junior formula in Europe. Yeah, he did really well in GP3. Had his eyes set on Formula One before returning to the US, like Paul said. So it's Newgarden with a four second lead over Will Power, then Sebastian Bourdais. We're riding with Zach Veach at the moment. Veach is back in 10th. He's starting to try and work on Simon Pagano in that bright yellow Menards Penske Chevrolet. If you can see that it's bright yellow from here. Yeah, the physicality. <laughs> he's the smallest driver in the field. So this place in the dry conditions, Townsend, is probably the most physical of racetracks we go to all year. You see the, the tracks now starting to get laid down, but in this type of condition, it's not a physical type race. It's all mental and just being tidy and consistent and not too heavy on the throttle pedal. And you saw a nice move from Takuma Sato there on Zach Clayman DeMello. Katie, what do you have? Well, Lee, not only is Zach Veach the smallest driver in the field, if you were watching qualifying yesterday, you saw just how sick he was. He was up all night on Friday with a stomach bug. Well, today he is feeling much better. He told me just before he climbed in the car that he is 100%, but his body is just tired and exhausted. He got a good night's sleep last night, and he was rubbing his hands together. Really excited for this rain race. He said yesterday was like being in a washing machine. He ate some dodgy barbecue, and it came back to bite him. Marco Andretti on screen. You saw him spin earlier. You saw the back end of it. This is what happened. Watching on board with Rossi out the tail. That's Marco Andretti coming down to that museum corner. Takes a lot of curb. Everything seemed under control, then just starts to pick up the throttle down on the low line. Now, that's where the rubber would have built up in dry conditions, and it's pretty slick in the wet. We ride on board with Hinch now. And see how Hinch goes wide. He finds the grip outside. Marco's trying down low, and the track's just not ready. Good job from Hinch to stay out of the way and avoid contact. Nice big lead here for Newgarden. He's got clear road ahead. We see on the on the camera not a ton of rain falling, so it's gotten lighter. Track conditions are gonna, gonna improve. He's got almost a five second lead. Joseph Newgarden, the young American from Hendersonville, Tennessee, is the race leader. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Tag Heuer official timepiece of the IndyCar series. And by United Rentals, official equipment rental services provider of IndyCar and proud sponsor of Graham Rahal. 
And there were some inside images of the amazing uh, Barber Vintage Motorcycle Museum, Motorsport Museum, which is now uh, in excess of 200,000 square feet. There it is there in the background. I was speaking with Mr. George Barber earlier today. They've added on that additional wing of 85,000 square feet as Graham Rahal makes a move on Zach Clayman de Mello, the young driver from Montreal. So Rahal continues to head in the right direction. And that was a move for 15. Pretty tough for Graham Rahal on visibility behind de Mello, but now he's got just a little bit of gap in front, so he should make quick work on closing that gap now that he can see where he's going, Marty. And Townsend, that's a very good point. He started 15th, fell back immediately to 17th, and now has gotten his way back up to 15th. But you can see we have a helmet cam with Graham Rahal, and you can see how tough that visibility is. He said, literally, I can see nothing. And now, as you mentioned, Paul, it's cleaned up a little bit on the racetrack, but it's still very tough inside that car as a driver. You can see the visibility, and he's got some room between him and the 14th place car, Townsend. Yep, and now he's going to just take advantage of the, I wouldn't call it a dry line, but at least a less wet line that's forming as this file of cars is pretty well spread out around the track. Unfortunately for Graham Rahal, as you see the Firestone telemetry at the bottom of the screen, how much slower you have to go when you can't see, Paul, when you're in the roost, if you will, of the car in front. And his lap time is about three seconds slower than what New Garden's experiencing up front. So that gap is growing rapidly between the mid-packers and the leader. Yeah. Hey guys, you think because there's, everything's not hanging off this, these new aero kits like the old ones were, the wheel guards are gone, the visibility is actually better for the drivers? Looks like it. I think the visibility is better. I think the cars don't throw as much water in the air as the old car, but I think it's also a combination of the track. They've done a lot of work here to get the drainage better. They've got a great crew. Townsend and I talked to the track manager right before the start. And he said they've really worked hard at trying to dissipate water off the track, make sure it funnels away. And I think that this track has just, it doesn't make, keep a lot of water on the race surface. Guys, not only are drivers dealing with the spray from all the other cars, Gabby Chavez started all the way back in 20th. And as you see, the team wipe off his visor there and crack it open for him. He is dealing with a fogged up visor. So guys, what's it like when you've got fog? Now Gabby might also have some rain coming into his helmet now. Well, that's the difference sometimes with a young driver like Gabby Chavez and some of the veterans who have seen the evolution of helmet technology and all the little tricks of the trade. If you put an inner liner, a second clear plastic liner inside your visor, it'll never fog. I don't know if Gabby has that, but I promise you a lot of the guys that have been doing this a while have put that second liner in. A lot of the rain, vi there's a sp specific rain visor that's made for it, but he's cycled right out in front of Bourdais. Bourdais will want to get by and keep out of the, out of the spray, but Looks like uh, he's not going to let him buy. You know, I'm hearing reports that it's starting to rain a little bit harder, but there are some that think that the forecast shows that it's going to be light rain, maybe even a drying track by the end. So while one would think everyone went full wet on the setup, some, like Sebastian Bourdais, went about half wet, or at least that's what Craig Hampson told me. Sebastian was saying, I don't know what's half, I don't know what's full, I don't know what you do for this kind of situation. But if it is not full wet, they're hanging on right now in this downpour. Hey, Kev. Kevin. Yes, sir. What do you mean you hear reports that it's raining harder? Step out from under the canopy. <laughs> from the driver. Let's get this first hand. Come on. I am under the canopy right now. <laughs> I'll, t I'll tell you what everybody would have done, Townsend. They're all going to stand up the camber, make the tires flatter, less camber, bigger contact patch. They're going to stand up the rear tires for better traction, soften the springs a little bit, and take front wing out and move your bias to the rear. That's kind of standard issue what you do when it rains. It's starting to sound an awful lot like a race engineer. I'll tell you what I heard was the big question was whether or not you disconnect your front anti-roll bar to allow both the left and right front tires to move independently and get a lot of roll and thus bite out of the front end. You gain front grip when you do that in the slower corners, but you lose high speed stability. This Barber track lead has everything under the sun in terms of high and low speed corners. And pre-race, I spoke with Ryan hunter Ray, and that's exactly what he was looking for. He said, I think our car at the moment set up a little too aggressively. So whether they've been able to correct that or not, RHR is running in fourth. What's happened to Charlie Kimball here? This in car's the dirty. Carlin entry. So a something happened, turn 17. See a lot of mud on the top of the side pod, so he's been off somewhere. Graham Ray Hall, yeah, broken TV, front wing. Good, but your call. Yeah, he's got a broken front wing. He could probably run on that because you're not going super fast. It just depends if it's rubbing on the tire or not. 
guys, when Charlie Kimball went off, we just missed that radio transmission where he thinks his front tie rods are broken, so he's going to be coming in, and we're getting ready to see a replay of exactly what happened here. It's turn 16, final corner. Not sure if he had help from behind or if he just lost it on the throttle, but pretty big fence or wall Armco impact to the front end of that Carlin car of Charlie Kimball. Looks like he might stop on yeah, track. Yeah, he's got an anti-stall, so the motor is stalled. And this will bring out a for, full course caution and group everybody up again. That big lead that Newgarden had is now going to evaporate. Full course caution. So remember, the first lap that counted today was under caution just uh, for precautionary measures. Then we got going and first competition. Uh, yellow under competition, I guess you could say, here at Barber Motorsports Park. I tell you what, guys, I think we've got a lot further than many predicted we would at this stage. It was it was kind of a little more doom and gloom, and so to be now on the 12th lap of this 90-lap race, or two-hour in duration, whichever comes first. And there, I just want to, while we have this tight shot here at Charlie Kimball's visor, you can just see the outline of an inner liner that keeps you from fogging up, but unfortunately for Charlie, he's got much bigger issues. The visor is great, but the rest of the car experiencing both electronic and some mechanical damage to the front end. But let's find out if Ed Jones might have had anything to do with Kimball here. He just goes out of frame there, and you can see he's right up under the back of Kimball, but gosh, it's hard to tell, Paul. I, I, don't, I don't think we saw anything to suggest contact. That looked an awful lot like a chrome horn from back in the day, perhaps. Well, it's hard to tell, like you said, from that angle. I mean, hard to believe that he got that close with that much spray behind the car and, and hit the back of him, but anything is, is but possible. But at the same time, visibility almost impossible when you're that close to a car ahead. So I don't see any damage on the, the nose there for Ed Jones, so I'm going to think that that's just throttle oversteer from Kimball, but... Charlie will know best. He'd certainly feel it if he was tapped. I don't think we can underscore how well he's been doing this year. I think nobody has expected Ed Jones to be as far up in the championship and the results he's got this year. So he, he grew up, he was born and raised in Dubai. And we were having a discussion last night at dinner, uh, Ed, myself, and Scott Dixon. And I asked him, hey, people would think necessarily that because you grew up in Dubai, you wouldn't be very good in the wet, although you went to Europe and did a lot of junior formula in Europe. And he said, that's where I really got my wet experience. He said, but don't laugh. Racing with the sand-covered tracks in Dubai actually made me, yeah. made me really good with a loose car. And he said, when I went to Europe and raced in F3, etc., he said, I was, it, it didn't feel too strange other than the visibility factor. They have some beautiful tracks in, in Dubai. I, I went over there once and tested, but you have a racetrack that's out in the middle of the sand dunes, and they, it just gets covered in sand and dust, and it's really, really slippery. Might I suggest you take him out to Glamis one of these oh, Thanksgiving weekends, Paul? Get that big sand rail out. There yeah. you can see the safety team working on Charlie Kimball. Ed Jones, to your point, Paul, currently 10th in points, but think about where he would be without that Phoenix incident. Yep. He was running solidly in the top three with just about 20 laps to go. Got caught up with lap traffic, ended up in the wall. And this is our biggest mover today. Takuma Sato up six positions, and look at that, tied with Jordan King and Tony Kanaan. And no, all making big moves. No great surprise, Team Bell, right? Sato, XF1 driver, plenty of rain experience, King, XF2 driver and grew up racing in the UK and Tony Kanana, veteran of the series today, making his 286th consecutive start. That's, That's an Ironman effort from a man who competed in many Ironman. Wonderful stuff from TK. Radio call from one of the teams that stay out, so nobody electing to pit. Pits are open right now. And we're not even... Well, one guy coming in, Paginot. Paginot, so somebody trying something different, and Clayman DeMello comes in.
time race, we're in a window. All these teams having an early read for the first time on fuel mileage in the rain. So they're doing math quickly, Marty, I'm sure, in terms of what they can get to the finish. As quickly as they can, Kyle Moyer said, OK, just come on down. We are in a window. You heard that transmission on the radio a moment ago. And that's the big question. Pagano not making the progress he would have liked. We'll see if these new tires make any difference. But the other guys opting to stay out, Lee, and get a little bit of track position. But it's a moving target. If it's time race, you don't know what the last lap of the race will be. Did you see how long he spun the tires on that concrete? Normally, these cars rocket out of the pit box. It took him five seconds to get out of the pit box. It was like a dog on a polished wood floor trying to grab some traction and finally got going. Under caution on a rainy day in Alabama. We welcome you back to Birmingham, Alabama to Barber Motorsports Park and the Verizon IndyCar Series where things are running at a slower pace. Under caution in very tricky conditions. Ready to go racing soon though, Robin Miller, right? Right, okay, we're talking to the Firestone people. Lead engineer Kerry Adams is telling us each team has five sets of rain tires. And I said, could you run the whole race if it stays wet on one set of tires? She said, sure you could, but it's crazy because you're going to be better if you have a new set. So everybody's going to probably change tires when they come in. And the Firestone's going to have a brand new rain tire. It's going to be ready for Detroit. We don't, we don't have to use it, but they're going to have a new one for Detroit. And a little self-promotion here. Thanks to my bosses, we've been doing essays this year. We started out with Sebastian Bourdais. We did Dan Gurney and Joseph Newgarden at Long Beach. We had one ready for Zach Veach today, but we didn't get to do it. However, if you're interested, go to the NBC Sports app, and you can see the Zach Veach promo. I think it's pretty cool. We've got some old pictures of him and some new pictures of him. He still looks like he's 12 years old, but he's doing a hell of a job, Marty. And Robin, those are so well done. So congratulations to you and the entire team. Hey, those tires we were just showing a moment ago came off Simon Pagino's car a moment ago. Kyle Moyer said to him, listen, we had to get off of everybody else's strategy if we wanted to do something in this race. And if it goes halfway, they could be in the catbird seat if it's a race to halfway here. But the tires that did come off, Kevin, look very good. So tire wear very, very strong today. And that strategy is going to play into it. And I think you're right that Pagino could be in the catbird seat. The top 15 did not pit. It is highly unlikely that they could get to halfway without needing fuel at some point. Somewhere around lap 30 or so, and we are just over 25 minutes into the race, so it would take a lot of yellow to get to halfway on time to make it without stopping, Katie. Well, Kevin, we saw that possible contact between Ed Jones and Charlie Kimball as we see the number 23 car sit on pit lane. Charlie came in and the team did change the front wing. Now they've got several mechanics going to work on the back of the car trying to figure out exactly why Charlie cannot get it to go into gear, guys. Well, right now, as it sits, we're saying that Pagano is in the catbird seat along with Marco Andretti is right behind him. So as long as these guys don't run into trouble, towns and spin, have a mistake, all the rest of the cars in front of them are going to pit under green or under yellow, and these guys might end up cycling right to the front. Well, they'll cycle to the front at some point. As you see the Carlin Hospitality, we had a chance to see this uh, in the flesh a couple days ago. It's a beautiful vantage point over in the turn 13, 14 area. Pretty plush. It looks like uh, Paul Tracy's living room in there with reclaimed wood and all kinds of uh, spirits and fun going on. So. Uh, really, really cool unit they've got over there. But I think what's really interesting is that they changed Simon Pagano's tires, that they didn't leave on the warm wets, because when you go to new wets, you get a sharper cut for a lot of water standing, but you lose the temperature that you've earned. Well, I think right now, going around under yellow for the last three, four laps, we're coming to green now. The temperature in these tires has dropped, and yellows breed yellows. Guys are getting racy in the back. They were. They were fighting over some real estate. It's the Penske boys up front. Joseph Newgarden, who has led every lap so far, gets Whoa. loose, really loose. That puddle, there's a puddle on the exit. He got sideways. Whoa! There goes Power! Will Power slams the wall! Another bad race for Will Power. That's three races this year. He's run into trouble. Hopefully we can get an inboard on that, but it looks like he just lost it all, all on his own, unless he got hit from behind. I don't think so. I think there was so much water that accumulated under yellow. That's the problem with the yellow flag laps is all of the water clearing that's taken place under green is eliminated, and everything, the rain is coming down pretty hard right now. Everything flows back, and like you said, Lee Newgard just absolutely almost lost it as well. Look at these guys racing that's with the caution out. Takuma Sato and Robert Wickens, so yeah, it was a wonderful save from Joseph Newgarden, and unfortunately, it all went wrong for Will Power. 
and Lee, he came on the radio and all he said was, that's it. So self-diagnosing that they are probably done for the day and such a crushing blow for this race team. He had the best average finish of everyone in rain races coming in at 5.4 and he was just all consistent in those races, not really passing people, just maintaining. And here's the replay of what happened to Will Power. Unfortunately, looks like he's gonna be out early, Lee. Watch this, watch the second car in shot. Well, the car passed him. Wow, he just hydroplaned. How lucky was Ryan Hunter Ray? Whew. I'll bet that most of the field was struggling to get to any kind of full throttle, even at the end of the straight. And I wonder if uh, if power just got a little too much or just simply the car just took off on him. You can see the puddles down the straight as we see the restart here. Newgarden up front. Newgarden will get a big wiggle right when he goes into that mirrored finish. That's just standing water. He almost loses it. Everybody else is to the inside. Power's out there, and right there, Power goes into another big puddle. And whammo. So do you think the fact that Bourdais coming up the inside kind of encouraged him to maybe stand on it a little harder, or? Oh, it probably took away his option yeah. to go to the inside and right. stay off the standing water. And here the tire's just spinning, spinning. Inside. Well, that answers, yellow, the yellow. that answers the question. There was no way to come anywhere close to flat. You could hear him short shifting, Paul. He was yeah. at about 20% throttle at 130 miles an hour. Well, and you take the fact that these cars now have turbochargers on them, so he's going in and out of boost as he's in the throttle, out of the throttle. The thing comes on boost, the tires light up, he gets out of it, he's out of boost, it gets back in the throttle, comes on boost, it lights the tires up again, and he loses it and spins to the inside, but I think the slippery line is right on the outside. I think you really got to stay in the middle of the track. So it's not just Will Power who is a victim in these conditions. So too, Charlie Kimball, right, Katie? Yeah, and we eventually did see that contact between you and Ed Jones. Charlie, what did you feel? I was just going through the corner and he ran into the back of me. And apparently the stewards reviewed it and no action taken. I vehemently disagree with that because when you're driving your race, especially in the wet, you got to be conscious where the other cars are. Yeah, it's hard to see. But at the same time, that's just a dumb move. He's not a rookie anymore. He needs to not be making rookie mistakes like that. What is the vision like out there? Uh, it's pretty tough, especially down some of the straights. Once it got spread out and the wind picked up, it was blowing a lot of the spray off, but we were starting to get a lot of hydroplaning down the front straight, especially out of five back into eight. The car was moving around a lot. So as the, the Firestones wore just a little bit, when they were new, the, car, the grip was really good. But with a little heavier rain, um, I think, and, and now, especially under yellow, it'll puddle up a little more. I think on that restart, you saw maybe Will get into the wall and I totally understand it with the puddles on the front straight. I don't know what the other pit reporters are feeling, but on my end of pit lane, the rain is certainly coming down a lot harder now, guys. Well, got to get this thing going again and have these Firestone tires clear some of the water off the track. So we had a nice, tidy start. Everybody got going for 12, 13 laps. And we really need to emphasize, try to get the cars going again, and that's going to clear the track up. Uh, for some of the teams that use a spotter here at Barber, I think there'll be a lot of information going down to their drivers saying, hey, front straightaway, yep. stay driver's left the whole way down because of what they witnessed of Newgarden and Power on that restart. That in-car audio for Will Power was very telling, wasn't it? it says everything. So it's telling. Practically like ice trying to lay down 700. 50 horsepower in these conditions. Now, it'll only take a lap or two of green flag running for the track to basically get all that moisture back out. But uh, Marty, what do you hear about Dixon? Hey guys, he's going to come in when pit road does open. I think it's actually lightened up a little bit in the last few minutes, but Scott Dixon has a problem. We've talked about visibility all day long, right? They are going to put a new helmet on Scott Dixon. I believe a red flag is going to come out though, but Scott Dixon saying, I have zero visibility inside the car. You see that new helmet being uh, prepared for Scott Dixon. They have put some rain -X on that helmet. They have actually removed what they would normally have for tear offs. As you see that red flag come out right now, but he won't be able to do that during the red flag. So when they do go back to caution, if we do go back to caution, Scott Dixon will need a new helmet. But Townsend, that's tough, isn't it? Because sometimes if you have tear-offs on your helmet, the moisture will actually get behind 
that visor and behind those tear-offs and it creates an even bigger problem. Yeah, it can really cause an issue, but the key is how do you keep the fogging down? So for anybody that homes that's gone skiing, pull out your ski goggles, you'll notice that every ski goggle is gen generally two lenses. Yep. So a layer of air is trapped in between to keep it from fogging up. So I wonder if somehow there's been a compromise to, to vi uh, Dixon's visor in that regard. As he sits in pit lane under red, I'm sure he'll be allowed to have a rag to wipe his visor, maybe a rag with some Rain-X dabbed on it, and he can clean his visor up, clean the inside of his visor, and do a little bit of trickery to fix his own helmet and not have to switch. Pretty interesting, you know, we've made a lot of the fact that none of the teams or drivers have any experience in the wet in this aero configuration for 2018, except for one team, Team Penske, because when they tested here, Elio Castroneves actually was here driving and stayed out, and Elio told me that they have video from that, and his teammates were able to study that so they get a sense of what to deal with. That's a huge leg up. I want to uh, listen to some radio transmission from the 15, the MyJack entry from Graham Rahal just a few moments ago. Have a listen. This is really dangerous. I mean, I love racing in the rain. I can't see, I can't see a single thing right now. I will radio it up. Big safe, please, big safe. And that is something that race control are very open to and very proactive with, and that is the honest and detailed feedback from the drivers. They've got safety first and foremost in their minds, so uh, that kind of feedback from Graham Rahal and the others is most helpful. Marty? Well, Lee, Will Powers made his way back to his timing stand. What happened on your incident, Will? Yeah, I mean, it was, I, it, I couldn't see a thing, and I had one car in front of me, so. Um, and I just was just aqua playing. I had no control. Spawn. Um, yeah, I I just can't believe they went green on that. How bad it was with the, the the amount of standing water. So yeah, very very disappointing. But to me, very dangerous. Did you as drivers make your voice heard and say, hey, we shouldn't be going green here? Did you tell your timing stand that? I can't remember. I don't know. I I we were talking about it, but it, yeah. My spotter said it was getting pretty bad. I mean, you could see it was getting really bad. I mean, I, I just kept saying to Roger, I can't see a thing in front of me like the lap before. I can't even see my hand in front of my face. Are the puddles everywhere, Will, or just, just where you guys were restarting right there? Um, it's just various spots, probably in the worst spots. Always seem to be sitting in the most high speed areas. I mean, on the back straight there uh, as well. So yeah, it's just, ah, man, it's the last thing we needed. Um, yeah, very disappointing and, and kind of disappointed that, that we went green. I know for you it's probably tough to put your arms around it right now, but just how frustrating has the entire start to the season been for the 12 team? Yeah, it has. Yeah, very frustrating, you know, very frustrating. I mean, I don't know what you do in that situation because if you completely back off, someone will hit you and it becomes really dangerous. And if you try to keep throttle in it, you, like I did, you spin. So it's just a really difficult situation to be put in. So just frustrating and uh, we'll move on to the next one. Yeah, a frustrating early exit for Will Power here in the rain at Barber. Marty, Robert Wickens also would echo the comments that we heard on the radio communication from Graham Rahal and what Will Power was talking about. Right after that restart, he radioed in and said, I was behind Scott Dixon. I never saw him. Somehow I'm in front of him now. And then just continuing conversation about how little visibility there is, how difficult it is right now. So uh, I think everyone enjoyed racing in the rain for a while, but there are limits to what really can be done. So we'll have to wait it out for a bit and hope this rain tapers off. Well, I think what they need to do right now is while the cars are sitting and it's raining, that get those brush trucks out on the track, which I see they are on the front straightaway now. Those cars were really effective at removing this big puddle. Look at all of that standing water just moving. These trucks right here with the brush on it are, that do amazing work. So hopefully they can get it cleaned up here. Certainly moving a ton of water. They've got a couple of those here at Barber along with the vacuum trucks. So Hopefully it'll be all dialed in as Ryan Hunter Ray saying, hey, I need some help with my visor. That is the luckiest driver out there today. He saw Will Power pirouette in front of him, no contact made, and was able to continue on and obviously gain a spot. Ryan Hunter Ray, a multi-time winner here at Barber Motorsports Park, and one of his victories in the wet. Could it be the same again today for the Andretti Autosport driver? To welcome you back to a uh, pretty uh, wet and soggy 
Barber Motorsports Park. Hey, PT, time to dial up Graham Rahal. Give him a call. Okay. Hey, Graham, it's Paul from the booth. Can you hear me? Yeah, bud, I got you. All right, well, we got the race going, and it looked like everything was going along pretty well. You were moving up, started to move up into the top 11, and then once it went yellow there, it looks like the rain came and then the track flooded. So from your perspective, I see you're changing a visor right now. Uh, you're fogging and can't see. I mean, man, I've raced a long time, and, you know, and uh, the, the, the lack of visibility today is the, far, the worst I've ever seen by far, which is... Which is surprising, but uh, I guess that this new car, the underwing, is pretty powerful, and it's just throwing water absolutely everywhere. So, you know, we just uh, we gotta, you know, figure it out. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's just, it's not ideal right now. Uh, we need to get some of this flooding out of here. But uh, so far, I mean, I think the Firestone rain tire has done a good job, and the car seems to be half decent. Just gotta keep it safe. I mean, I I'm not kidding you. On the front straight, I can't see my own nose cone. I mean, that's how bad it is, and. You know, and so guys that are going to take some risk might gain some advantage, but uh, I certainly don't want to be one of those guys. Well, un under yellow, like, fr where's the worst section? It looks to us like the front straightaway has just got a bunch of big puddles and rivers going across it. How was the rest of the track compared to the front straight? Well, the front straight's really bad, and I would say out of turn five, turn five down into uh, turn nine is, is awful. I mean, under yellow, the car's hydroplaning, so... Uh, you know, I actually uh, wasn't even, it wasn't even uh, warming brakes in the front straight, touched the brake pedal, and the front brake stayed locked for about, you know, a third of the straightaway, which I've never experienced in my life, even though uh, I had re released the brake. So very, very, very strange. All right, well, the rain has kind of stopped. It's slowed down a little bit. Hopefully we can get this thing back going and you can keep moving forward. Good luck, buddy. Hey, man, thanks. Great to hear the perspective of uh, Graham Rahal and take a look at this to match his words from earlier. Ready? Ready, green, green. Slow tap. Well, there you go. Low, go low. Check it up. Absolutely blind on the front straight. Let's see if we can get this guy on the radio, Joseph Dugard. Hey, Joseph, it's Townsend Bell in the NBC booth. You got me? Hey, man, I got you, Townsend. Buddy, you got the best view out there, but that last restart looked like an, a wicked handful. Talk us through it. Yeah, it's gotten tough. I mean, unfortunately, uh, you know, the rain, it gets to the point with, with these cars where it's just too much. Uh, with the way the floor is so close to the ground, you start getting some hydroplaning issues and the tires, um, you know, just, they just struggle with all the puddles. So for me, I had huge wheel spin and I, I almost did about what Will did. So it's unfortunate to see that for a teammate. I think it's gonna happen to anyone there on the front stretch. We're doing all we can to get this race in for the fans, but you know, it's just a lot of rain that's coming down right now and it, it's just pooling around this track. So it's unfortunate to kind of kind of ruin our race day. How was the rest of the track? We were talking to Graham Rahal earlier. It sounded like most of it was on the front straight, but you, you know, you're the you're the guy out leading the pack there. So once you got going, was it okay? Yeah, the beginning of the race was all right. I'd say it was right on the edge. You know, it's a wet track. Uh, you had a little bit of puddles everywhere, so it wasn't easy. But uh, you know, it was manageable at the beginning, and then towards the end, uh, before we got to that caution, it started getting worse, and you started to notice more pooling water. I was getting wheel spin on the front stretch. And then that caution, it just got really bad. Everything started pooling in. So it's, it's tough around everywhere. I think the, the rivers here are starting to form. And that's unfortunately what you get with a track like this with a bunch of elevation. One of the coolest tracks you can come to the race at and watch, but it just gets very difficult when you get a lot of rain. So, you know, fortunately, the Hitachi car was really good there. Uh, Team Chevy's done a good job for us this weekend. It's just getting difficult with all this rainfall, man. All right, buddy. Good luck. We'll be watching. Thanks, brother. Now take a look at this. We showed you Will Powers uh, replay. This is Joseph Newgarden. Have a listen. Green, green. That is a heck of a save, folks. All clear, all clear. Almost lost it again as he just got to the brake zone, but that save, Paul, you heard how oh, long yeah. he was off throttle and the car was just <laughs> literally skating. The thing I noticed, too, I'm looking in his visor. He's, he had big eyes like Will Power, <laughs> and I'm sure Will's eyes got real big. But look at his visor. He's out front, 
and he's got tear-offs on that visor, and it's clear, so he's got a clear road. Everybody else behind him is having vis uh, vision problems because they're in the spray all the time, and the water gets inside your visor and fogs up. So Will Power has had trouble in three of the opening four races. This was lap one, turn two at St. Pete. He and Robert Wickens went at it. He rebounded off Wickens. And then, while in a very strong position in Phoenix, he got up into the grey, up into the marbles, and it was night over. And then here today on this most recent restart, whoop, around it goes, and it's day done. So last weekend in Long Beach, he finished on the podium in second. He said that was a great morale boost for himself and his guys, his team. Unfortunately, today it all went away in what Will described as very dangerous conditions. So it has been a tough start. It, even though he, we showed the highlight guys of him spinning at St. Petersburg, he did rebound to finish 10th, but then Phoenix was not so good outside the top 20 and then came back to stand on the podium last weekend. So it's kind of one step forward, one step backwards this year for Will Power, only to rebound in the month of May. We'll see. Let's see, what should I say? One is I'm, uh, I'm OCD, badly. Color coordinated in the closet, all that sort of stuff. I'm a workaholic. My wife tells me I work way too much, but I just can't help it. I'm a huge motorcycle fan. I'm a massive uh, hockey fan. Other than Ohio State football, uh, hockey's probably my favorite, favorite sport. Five is I have a perfect dental record. I don't, I've never had a cavity in my whole life, but I do have a fake tooth. My front tooth is fake because I knocked it out a couple years ago at the team Christmas party. So there you go. So there you go. That was something new that we're doing this year. Five things you didn't know about whichever driver we tend to choose on the day. I'd like to know what happened at that Christmas car party yeah, to cause the tooth a, getting knocked out. Let's get back on the let's CB. Let's get a sixth thing. Let's, let's get, get back on the things. CB. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we continue the thread on Graham Rahal as the water and the teams here at Barber Motorsports Park try valiantly to remove the water from the circuit. 2014 was a pretty memorable year. Look at one Pablo Montoya here going around the outside, taking evasive action as Takuma Sato spun in one of the high-speed sections. Turn five, Will Power. He was in command at this point and threw it into the gravel trap. Yeah, it's just uh, another day like that today. Little mistake, front straightaway. But we look here, Lotion and Borde. Those guys never had a friendly relationship with each other. Lotion tried to roll it back into him over right there, Townsend. No brake pedal at all. And this was Montoya losing it at the exit of the high-speed chicane. It's the other guy squirreling at the back. 18 Dale coin car, but up front, Ryan hunter Ray. This was that wet victory I was alluding to a little earlier, Ryan, so this is one of his favorite wet races. That was Michaela Lotion putting a period on his day. That's where it all ended. And Ryan hunter Ray, the finger in the air, you betcha. All the way to the checkered flag, impressing himself, his family, Michael Andretti. What a day for RHR here at Barber. He is a multi-time winner here as well. So, we joined Katie Hargett on pit road. What you got, Katie? I have found Bobby, and if Graham won't tell us what happened at that Christmas party where he lost the tooth, I gotta ask you, what happened, Bobby? You know, I wasn't there, I didn't see. I just heard that um, he forgot to put his hands up when he fell, and uh, <laughs> one point landing. Uh, but that's only, you know, I wasn't there like I said, so I don't know. But no dental bills before that, so that's a good thing, right? Uh, no, at that point, of course, he's responsible for his own dental bills now, so, uh, but yeah. Now you are on Takuma Sato's stand, who's in addition to your team this year under red flag conditions right now, and he's up 10 positions. How much does this red flag and the rain change your strategy today? Well, you know, it's a two-hour two hour race, and of course the clock stops when it goes red, so while we've been sitting here, it really hasn't counted against that two hours yet. Um, but uh, clearly there will be, if there's a two-hour window for TV, or maybe it's two and a half hours, um, we're eating into that, and definitely starts to play a bigger role as to when you might stop next um, uh, you know clearly you want to be you, you want to have enough fuel to get to the end whenever it is you just hope they give you guidance and they don't pull any surprises on you the officials and you know say oh well we're gonna we're gonna stop at you know in 15 laps from now and so all those guys that were at the back of the field that stopped they all 
make out like bandits and everybody up front racing hard uh, gets penalized, which is what happened at NOLA a few years ago. So, uh, you know, we'll see, but hopefully we'll get guidance. And we are, you are able to talk to Takuma over the radio right now. With him up 10 positions, what's he saying? Oh, I think he's happy. You know, he's doing a great job. I mean, I, for, for me, I just told him before the race, you know, it's going to be a long race. It's going to be a lot of incidents. Let's just stay disciplined. And and um, I have no doubt. I mean, he's proven he's always a good rain driver. So it's just a matter of, you know, no mistakes. Drive within yourself. And, uh, you know, we do that. We'll, we'll be up. We'll get you up front. And he's on his way. In your day, you drove a lot of races in the rain. Did you like it? I don't think anybody really likes driving in the rain. It's a, it's a matter of how much you uh, dislike it or how little you like it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, when it's conditions like this, this is tough. You know, you see it on the end car. I mean, you know, I've been in races where you can't see five feet in front of you and you're going 160 miles an hour and you're just kind of crossing your fingers and praying. And that's no fun for the drivers. Uh, uh, I mean, to be honest, you know, it's no fun for the spectators. I mean, it's dramatic looking, but, you know, last two days have been so beautiful and now we get this today it's really a shame but I think we do need to give these folks who, who are out here uh, who are out here uh, you know a full race and uh, and hopefully the officials will see that too I guess you're only gonna say you like the rain if you're successful right guys absolutely absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. you love the rain if you win in it all right thanks Bobby Thank and there you have it that sets the scene uh, here in Alabama as that rain continues it is uh, has been so persistent and we have to give credit to the fans too because we should say yesterday the weather was so beautiful and we heard from the officials that there was in excess of 30,000 spectators here yesterday the largest Saturday crowd ever since IndyCar has been coming here so congratulations to all those fans who did come out as we take a look at Zach Veach of Andretti Autosports in the Group 1001 entry and Robin Miller alluded to it earlier about his special essays his features that he's been doing this year and this week right now it's Zach Veach. IndyCar rookies usually blend in with the scenery as they come to grips with the increased horsepower and stout competition of the Verizon series while trying to keep their nose clean and learn on the fly. They're not supposed to be major players, certainly not in their first few races. But what we've seen so far from the rookie class of 2018 is an anomaly with a capital A. And the one newcomer in the IndyCar paddock that seemed to have the least amount of expectations has already opened everyone's eyes with his performance. Zach Veach may be the least physically imposing IndyCar driver since Mario Andretti came on the scene in the early 60s. At 5'5 and 131 pounds, he looks more like a jockey at Churchill Downs than a gunfighter in Indianapolis. But he's got more heart than muscle, and it serves him well. Bullied and belittled as a kid because he told people he wanted to be a race car driver, Veach started climbing the car racing ladder when his father, a champion tractor puller, sold his ride to finance his son's career. After six wins in Indy Lights, the money was gone. And at age 23, it appeared the Ohio native's only ride would be driving the IndyCar two-seater. Then he got some divine intervention. Last May, he asked his pastor if there's anyone he could talk to about getting some financial backing for the 2017 Indy 500. An Indy businessman named Dan Towers came to the rescue. That led to a full-time ride with Andretti Autosport for 2018. So last Sunday at Long Beach, in his debut in the famous street race, Veach finished fourth and held off veterans Graham Ray Hall and Marco Andretti in the process. Thought to be too frail to muscle an Indy car with no power steering, Veach emerged from his car barely sweating, but grinning triumphantly. That's a damn victory right now. We can build on this. Oh, yes! Finally! All right, Zach Veach's good season is continuing, folks, because he's sixth right now during the rain delay here. But I think the real mark is when you're, when you're Zach's stature and people are saying, well, he's a little guy, I mean, he's not going to be strong enough to drive some of these cars, and he does such a good job like he's done so far this season and has a result like he did at Long Beach and finishes fourth. His crew is a bunch of veteran guys that have been with a lot of different teams, and they're really, really fired up to be his, with his team right now, and I think they really believe in him, and I think that means so much to him because, you know, everybody's always skeptical of rookies to start with, but he's done a really good job, hadn't put a wheel wrong, and I think he surprised so many people, including his crew. So once you get the crew, your crew on your side, it's fabulous because then every, they're going to work twice as hard for you. But his dad sacrificed, as you guys probably saw in our feature, his tractor. He, he was a tractor pool guy, and he sold his stuff to help his son get to the top and racing, and they ran out of money after he won six Indy Lights races. So it's really easy to cheer for this kid. And he found, you know, he, he found somebody that was going to help him, and 
Tim's been really great with the group 1,000 people, and he's got a ride for the season. Who knows where this thing's going to go? But he went from being out of racing almost to being right in the thick of things in the IndyCar series, and I think that's one of those stories that you always hope you're going to see, and he's a young American, and he's 23 years old, and hell of a story so far, Lee. Robin, it's a beautiful story. It's a family story, and I think that, like you said, for the uh, diminutive stature of this young man, he has a huge heart, and he has an enormous amount of courage. And for those kids who bullied him when he was at school, I can tell you one thing. None of those so-called hero bullies will race the Indianapolis 500 like this young man will. And we wish him well. He almost got on the podium last week, and he is a star of the future. This is a fantastic story. He was on the Today Show uh, with Kathy Lee and Hoda. And I mean, that's intimidating as it is. He wrote a book at that stage, 99 Things You Need to Accomplish by the Age of 16. He incorporated his bullying stories and an anti-bully movement there. And he said, never, ever stop chasing your dreams and never give in. Be single-minded, chase them, have the courage to do so. And he is living proof of that. And he qualified yesterday with food poisoning. This is a tough kid, and he's a great American racer. Back at Barber Motorsports Park, still raining, although it has lightened up a little bit, and the sky has lifted as well, but we are still under a red flag, hoping to get race conditions back underway soon. You know, that last restart when Will Power lost it at the restart, Roger Penske not very happy that IndyCar decided to go back to green. They actually sent an instant message from their timing stand. It's the system between IndyCar and the teams as we watch a replay of Will Power spinning from second place on that most recent restart. They sent a message and said, you know what? Not good to go. The driver's in second saying he has no visibility. They went anyway, and this is what happened to Will Power. They also told the official in their pit stall as well, and you saw his teammate Joseph Newgarden get a little bit loose, who was the leader of the race. So Roger Penske not very happy that they went back green, Kevin, and after all, his driver Will Power spun wrecked out of the race after that incident. Well, Dale Coyne's driver, Sebastian Bourdais, is right up there behind Newgarden, so what are you hearing from Sebastian right now, Dale, about uh, whether there's any chance of racing anytime soon? We th we're not sure it should have gone red. I mean, it was getting pretty light at that point. They got a little bit heavier, getting light again now. If you look at the radar, an hour from now, the rain's going to be all over. So it's a question of what they want to do, what they want to do with television. You know, we could do a two-hour race here. It just take time to get it in. Are you hearing anything from IndyCar yet about what kind of time frame we're looking at? No, haven't heard a word. You've been the rain meister over the years. How many races have you run in the one in the rain? At least a couple. A couple, yeah. 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 So when you're running up front, you've always taken chances before. How much does that change uh, whether you're going to take big chances? It changes completely. So uh, even now, you know, when people pit, when do they think the end of the race is? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of questions going on right now. Dale Coyne has Sebastian Bourdais up front, waiting to see if we go again, Katie. Well, Kevin, it's gotten a lot windier on my end of pit lane, so Brian Barnhart on the 88 scene is helping me with my umbrella. But, Brian, you last year, you were the race director. You were the guy making the call whether we were going to go back racing or not. What's your point of view on this? Well, one, I'm glad I'm not making that call anymore. Uh, it's, it's a really difficult position, and obviously the number one priority is safety for the competitors, and, and it's tough because uh, I think what happened, as long as we were green and running, everything was good. Uh, we had the caution, and then I think the water started puddling up again as we came for the restart. The front stretch coming out of 17 had a pretty big puddle on it, and everybody started hydroplaning there. So that's what they're trying to address and uh, get it to a position where we can go back racing again. But again, with safety as the priority, I'm sure that's their thought process as well. And speaking of safety, you already pitted your driver, Gabby Chavez, for some problems in fogging with his helmet. What do you think he will encounter when we go back green? He's much happier now. We just had a situation where he couldn't get his uh, visor opened and it fogged up on him pretty bad and he literally couldn't see. So again, with safety being the right call, we get him in get it cracked open. Uh, after he went back out, he's happy with everything. We're down a lap to the top five. We'll watch what everybody does and just go from there. All right, thanks, Brian. Let's get over to Marty. Hey, Katie, we saw Scott get Dixon get a new visor a moment ago. So Lee Orbaugh is a spotter for Scott Dixon. He actually stands on top of that building. He came down from the top of that building, ran all the way back to the transporter because they put a new visor on for Dixon and made a brand new visor for Scott Dixon to have for the rest of the race in case they have to go to another backup. And they made sure that this was tight the way it's supposed to be and rain -X on both sides of the visor. That's the key thing, Townsend. you got to have anti-fog inside the visor and outside the visor to make sure it's a clean view for the driver for the rest of the race. Well, there you go. 
We see Ryan Hunter Way, Ray waiting. Now we thought we were about to refire engines soon, but we still sit here, Paul. And I wonder how much of an impact a Roger Penske opinion is going to have versus a Dale Coyne opinion. It, you know, when you're leading these races and you've got conditions like that, you generally are going to do everything you can to be conservative. But now we hear the engines fire. So it's on. Right looks now, like we might get get going here. Is the time to go out and have some exploration laps, see how wet it is. They've been running those brushes up and down the front straightaway. They're out there right now. Here they are again. So they've pretty much cleaned up the front straightaway. And they need to actually just get out there, get the clock going again, and see what it's like for the drivers. Paul says get the clock going again. Again, folks, just reminding you that the objective is so the race can be declared so long as it gets to one hour in duration of a two-hour total race because it was originally meant to be 90 laps. Under these slower conditions, there's no way possible we'd get in 90 laps uh, under two hours so then it gets pushed to becoming a timed race and it can be classified so long as it just goes over the 50% uh, mark so so long as we can get to that one hour mark uh, things will be good but that's uh, easier said than done we can see they're still puddling along the edge of the track where that brush machine was going down so if they do get back to race you see here you can see all this water along here you're going to want to stay over in the middle of the track on the far side over here. It seems to be much cleaner over in the middle section along here. But there's a big puddle right along the edge of the track. Unless somebody gets inside you, as happened for uh, Will Power there with Sebastian Bourdais to driver's left. they got the jet dryers out doing everything we can to get this thing cleaned up. But there's a lot of water out there. It is that, it's, it's that spot exiting turn 17 coming onto the front straight where we saw and then also heard Graham Rahal say in turn five as well in the hairpin. It's a key spot, but that's the trouble. That's the yeah, trouble right, spot right, right there. Exiting 17 up on the curb as everyone continues to work as hard and as fast as they can. Stay with us. Welcome back to Barber Motorsports Park and the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Lee Defeat Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy with you. Very wet, tricky and treacherous conditions here. However, engines are fired and we feel that it's just a few moments away before we see cars roll. And here we go. Joseph Newgarden lets them go. And like any sport, there's good rivalries. And within IndyCar, there's a budding rivalry about a different sport. Take a look. All right, James, so the Nashville Predators and the Toronto Maple Leafs have made it to the playoffs. I think my team's going to go further, so here's what we're going to do. Whoever gets knocked out of the playoffs first, the loser has to bake the other person a handmade cake. you got to do it yourself. I like vanilla, FYI. And you got to wear the opposite team's jersey while you present it at an autograph session. So we'll see who goes the furthest. Remember, I like vanilla. See you soon. All right, Joseph, challenge accepted. I think the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to go further in the Stanley Cup playoffs than the Nashville Predators, and here's why. Because they're going to win it all. Nobody goes further than the team holding the cup. So, deal. I'll happily take a hand-baked cake from you. Personally, I'm a red velvet guy. So brush up, Martha Stewart, because you're going down. <laughs> There's nothing like playoff hockey. And tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern, right here on NBCSN, it's Game 6 in Denver as the Nashville Predators look to advance versus the Colorado Avalanche. That's 7 o'clock Eastern here on NBCSN. We'll see who has the last laugh between those two. We have got a stranded uh, ABC supply car. Uh, Tony Kanan. Tony Kanan. He had troubles exiting pit lane yesterday. Here's the issue we run into now. Cars have been running in the wet, sitting in the wet, everything getting saturated with water, electronic boxes, steering wheels, and these type of things start to run into issues. You see Tony Kanaan now rolling backwards down the hill. This is a problem that might occur. We seem to see it happen every time it rains. It's just they have elect electrical problems. There we go. Yeah, he said he couldn't get it in gear. It's been a rough weekend for Kanaan. Like Zach Veach and a couple others, he was really sick on Friday, took a big IV bag, felt better yesterday, feels okay today. Car hasn't been good, so he welcomed the rain. Now he's just trying to get back in it. Well, it finally went in gear, and he got it away off the hill, so problems went away. So we come now, here's the trouble area. Turn down the front straightaway. You can see that big river Question down I the outside here. Big puddle right here. So that's, that's the problem zone. Question I have is will they allow Tony Kanan to resume 
his position. I would think not. He'd have to go to the back of the field. Have an right? issue, I think, back of the field. But he'll be able to warm his tires a lot better than everybody in front of him. He well, started the race at the back, and he was able to jump many spots. If you're going uh, to go to the back of the, of the field now, I'd dive in the pits and do your, do your pit stop, top up with fuel, and be in the catbird seat. Maybe new, maybe throw a new set of wets on as well. By the way, I just want to go back a couple of moments ago and just say if you notice some different video on that NHL promo, it, it definitely is uh, Predators Avalanche tonight, 7 Eastern right here on NBCSN. By the way, that was a 37-minute red flag hold. So that'll give you some time context, and the goal is to get to a one-hour point in this race, and we'll keep you up to date as to the duration of actual race time as we get going here. Be about 22 minutes to go to get to that one hour mark as we run right now. Clock is running. Conditions don't look too bad on the back side of the track. Like I said, it looked like it was all front straightaway issues here. The track looks, looks in good condition. Now here's the thing. If there's about 22 minutes to get to the halfway mark, if the race was called at one hour, the question is, do all of these cars at the front, like Joseph Newgarden, have enough fuel to get 22 minutes as somebody's already Ray lost Hall. it? Graham Ray Hall. Only lost a couple positions. Luke, Luke has kept going. I wasn't even on the gas. I don't know what the hell happened. Anyway, it's all good. And I think a lot of these cars do have the fuel to get to that halfway mark. Doesn't mean they'll call it in an hour, but let's watch what happens with Ray Hall. Listen. Well, he was on the throttle. Not so much. A little bit of a white lie there. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> I think that was just right where Marco also got around earlier in the race. Right down by the museum, it's so slick. And not only is the surface generally slick, but you also have these seams, guys, that are right in the track. And they re this track over the winter. And that also can create an issue, a lot like you see on ovals sometimes in the dry. Tony Kanaan in the pits. Now it's obvious he's having a problem with his shifting. Uh, they've got a, the car plugged in, doing an ECU reset. So this is the issue you run into when you have all this water getting in electrical connections. You, nothing's completely watertight, Marty. And Paul, they have gone to consulting the drivers on what they think of the conditions are as we see uh, Lace come down pit road. Now we're riding with Joseph Newgarden, the leader. They've asked him a couple of times, and they said he thinks, I think it's okay if we wanted to go racing, but there are certainly puddles. He said, especially the straightaways, that seem to be where the worst puddles are. So that's the report from the leading driver. And a moment ago, Tim Sendrick said, to him, Joseph Newgarden, exactly what you said, Paul. Make sure you restart. If we do go back green, more in the middle of the racetrack, you're a little too far right where the puddles were on that last restart when you lost traction. I am shocked that Newgarden is suggesting that oh, might be okay based on how difficult the yeah. restart was. This is the race leader, and he has the biggest risk of them all because he'll be the first one to hit any standing water. How about Sebastian Bourdais and Dale Coin Racing with Vassar and Sullivan? If Bourdais can stay where he is in these treacherous conditions to score two podiums in the first four races would be a phenomenal start for Sebastian Bourdais. Ryan hunter Alexander Rossi. You know, Rossi's had a remarkable start to this year. He's had three consecutive podiums to lead this championship. An amazing start for the Californian, who has plenty of wet weather experience, by the way, his time racing in the UK and in Europe. So these conditions don't phase. Alexander Rossi, James Hinchcliffe is well poised in fifth. Zach Veach, unbelievable run in two weeks. He's placed sixth, Robert Wickens seventh. Then we go back to Takuma Sato, Scott Dixon, and Ed Jones, the two Ganassi cars, ninth and 10th. Things have definitely lightened up. You can see that on your screens at home. Well, I mean, I think they need, a to, little bit. need to give it a try here. The clouds are pretty high now. It doesn't seem to be raining very hard, but you can see still some water on the front straight. But this is what concerns me, Paul, is you see this mirrored finish right here. That's standing water just going into turn one. I think the front straightaway looks okay, but we really don't know until you try. And uh, I think they've got to, you know, they've got to consider giving an attempt here and just have the drivers tiptoe through it. Lots, wow. Lots of wind now. The wind has kicked up. Hopefully that'll move some water around. There were some strong wind warnings issued a little earlier today, so no great surprise to see images like that.
So, you can see the, the uh, heavier stuff to the northwest, so missing Barber. We're right in the middle of that uh, uh, circle, those concentric circles there. So, uh, Bur Barber is a little east uh, on just off I-20 on the way to Atlanta. And the worst of it to the north and the west of where we are now. And we bring you up to speed on what has gone down so far. The initial start of the race after one circuit under the safety car, behind the safety car and under caution. Things got going. New Garden with a good clean start. Hunter Ray and Dixon were pretty tight. However, on lap five, take a look at this. This was Marco Andretti, who was really racy early on, and James Hinchcliffe with a really quick reaction to avoid that. And then lap eight, visor issues on the 88 car. Gabby Chavez came in, crew had to wipe everything down, help him get the visor open to get some air in there. Lap 11, Kimball says he got run into from behind by Ed, Ed Jones, and that is where everything unraveled. The rain started to fall harder. We tried to go back to green on lap, well, the car started to pit, and then tried to go back to green. And that was Pagano trying to go off strategy to make something happen, do something different. But then this, this was a restart with Joseph Newgarden almost losing it. And then you can't even see his teammate except there he is, Will Power, full 360, big slam into the concrete barrier, and Will Power is out of the race. And then race control said that is enough for now. And the field went under red and we bring you back live. It is a second red flag period. First one was for more than uh, 37 minutes, just over 37 minutes. The field comes under red again. Katie. And guys, not only are drivers dealing with a wet track and low visibility along with the wind, well, Max Chilton just came over the radio and reported that he is also dealing with just being cold. He is shivering and it's making it really hard to even hold on to a steering wheel. Paul Tracy, you just threw your hands up in the air. You clearly disagree with this decision. I, I mean, I can't, I'm not out there driving, but I mean, I've driven for a long time in my career, and I think they didn't even give it a chance to get going. Uh, obviously, there, there is puddles, and it is wet, but it's raining out, so. I thought you were just disgusted at hearing a driver saying they were cold, but this <laughs> no, is coming from a guy that, I remember you testing in Nazareth uh, yes. in the snow, so you've got a different perspective than, than a lot of us. And perhaps that is what has led Kyle Novak and race control, just that turn 17 section, just that puddle that will not go away. I guess, I mean, this is one of the things that just f frustrates me a lot, is whenever it rains, it seems, in an IndyCar race, it just always turns into a full panic knee-jerk reaction all the time, and it's, it's frustrating to watch. I think that uh, the fans want to see a race. They want to see these guys drive and really work hard to stay on the track, and... You know, the conditions are tricky, but it's the same for everybody. And I mean, you think back to the days back in the, back in the day when A.J. Foyt and Mario Andretti, they raced these cars back then in the rain in much, much in conditions just like this. And you just you go out there, and if you got to slow down, you slow down. I do agree. Again, that's coming from the two guys comfortably sitting up in the booth. <laughs> And I've certainly been on the other end of that spectrum, as you see pace car driver Oriol Servia talking with Joseph Newgarden. Let's, let's see if we can hear what's going on. That's what I asked. I was like, it can't just be the front straight, you know? Is it one place, kid, that's just bad? Just, just one no, it's place? Everywhere. It's everywhere. It's every straightaway. There's hydroplaning at pace car speed. So you do that at 150, you're going to have people hitting fences everywhere. So it's not a matter of just using the brake and the throttle smart. No, I mean, like what happened to Will, that's not driver error. That's just hydroplaning, you know, and it's out of his control at that point. So they, they, they've, done, they, they've done as much as they can maybe on one part here, but 17's bad and, and five, or is there two places that are really bad? Yeah, it's really the straightaways. Like if we get going, I'd be really nervous to get going on, you know, the turn three to five straight, five to eight, and then all the way in the back stretch is really, really bad. And then you've got rivers forming now just because the – the water's been too consistent. You know, it's letting up a little bit, but because it's a consistent stream, it's just forming waters on all the compressions now. So it's it's tough. I mean, I, look, I want to run. I mean, it's fun to run in the wet, but 
these cars are a bit sensitive with how low the floor is and then the tires if they're too saturated they'll just it's, you can hydroplane it's just like being on a highway and going too fast when there's too much water all right well thank you for your time kid yep. lee yeah good to hear from uh, joseph newgarden and in detailed fashion that it was the straights and just too much standing water as all the drivers put their booties on to keep their driving shoes uh in good order this is uh we, we didn't see this, this many drivers get out of their respective cars at the first red. So uh, this kind of has that feeling about it that's going to be for a little longer. Look at all the moisture that's built up in the gloves of Sebastian Bourdais. That's his father off to the left. And I tend to think Bourdais wishes that they were running. Kev? Diff, I think we've got a first here. I was listening to uh, James Hinchcliffe's podcast with Alexander Rossi recently off track, and you were bragging because you know the question race car drivers always get from people that aren't into racing. What happens you have to go to the bathroom, and you bragged, I have never done it in the seat or the suit. What's going on today? Well, let me, let me tell you something, Kev. I, I always maintained that I knew at some point in my career would happen. And there's a great story from Toronto in 2014 when poor, poor Carlos Munoz was sitting in the car begging to be let out. We were under red flag conditions, same kind of deal. And he finally said, guys, I'm sorry, I can't hold it. And they said, you can't get out. He pees in the seat. Not 30 seconds later, race control comes over the radio and says, all right, driver's out, we're, we're done. Well, I was sitting there during that first red, and I was begging to get just three minutes. It's all you need. Three minutes, wheel off to wheel on. And when we got going again, I was my legs were shaking. I had to go so bad. I'm like, I can't drive a race car like this. So under caution, it took me a full lap. It was one of, one of the least comfortable experiences of my entire life. But I can officially say I've joined the likes of Will Power and Dario Franchitti and other greats that have peed themselves in their suits. So you're talking to a man that just wet himself. All right, I'm going to keep my distance and stand over here a little bit. Now let's talk about the uh, on-track action. And one of the more interesting moments you had a great view of, at least maybe you had a view of it, Marco Andretti right ahead of you and you avoiding him. Yeah, it's one of the few things that I think I actually saw so far today. Um, it's just, I mean, Marco, he's, he's great in these conditions. You know, he's very aggressive on the start, made some spots up, and it was so easy, you know, for that to happen. It could have happened to anybody. I feel bad for him because he really did have a good uh, good start going there all over the back of Rossi. But it's tough, man. These cars, they kick up so much spray, and, you know, we saw on that restart there, I, I picked the inside line just kind of because I felt coming out of the last corner, let's try the inside this time. And had I not, I would have been right in the back of Dixon. Uh, didn't even I saw a little red light go by me, and I'm like, Either that's a car that had a problem, or I'm about to hit the turn one wall really hard because you just can't see anything. So it's a tough position. We want to go out there and race. And when we were once we were running, it was fine. But as soon as we went yellow, the the puddle started building and the, the spray got worse. And uh, we want to put on a show for the fans, but at the same time, we don't want to hurt anybody. So I I see the the predicament that race control's in. All right, go freshen up. Thank you so much, Katie. Uh, Kevin, I don't think I can top that interview, and I'm not even going to go there. So I'll just go straight to the conditions on the track with Zach Beach. What was your visibility like from sixth? Uh, absolutely nothing. That's uh, that's the thing. This is my first time driving any car in the wet, and I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. But uh, coming to even under yellow on the front straight, there's so much water, uh, you can't tell where the car's at. So you kind of just lift about you know a quarter way down the straightaway and, and hope you don't get ran over from behind like it's happened to some of the guys. So I don't know what's going to happen here, but uh, so far for the Group 1001 guys, we're having a pretty good race. Hopefully we can uh, hang on to that. I'm trying to hang on to the umbrella while it's getting really windy down here. But <laughs> under last the last red flag, we saw the feature on you about your deal with Group 1001 and just your road to any car Dan the CEO of group 1001 is here this weekend what's your message to him ah just thank you I mean I think uh, that's what everyone needs in life is an opportunity right and we worked so hard to get to IndyCar this has been my dream since day one you know some guys focus on the European route but for me IndyCar was always it and I just needed an opportunity and now that we have that I I think we're showing that we belong but uh, definitely there's a lot more improvements I want to make uh, I'm not gonna be happy until we win an IndyCar race but uh, you know each day we get a little closer all right Lee I think we just need a little bit more co cooperation with mother nature to get this race back underway and yeah, based on positions where they are at the moment he'd be in the top 10 in the points leaving Barber Motorsports Park here this afternoon so we're back into a holding pattern folks Stay with us, we'll keep it entertaining, we promise. Picture tells the story, doesn't it, here at Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back. Uh, still in a holding pattern, as we mentioned a little earlier, waiting to get going again. And while the drivers have scrambled, our Robin Miller is still standing by. What you got, Robin? 
Oriole Sylvia is in next month's Indy 500, but today he's driving the pace car, and they've been in contact with you, race control, the whole time, and you said it's pretty nasty. Listen, we're trying to get the race in, and they, they're sending me out there like, Oriol, what do you think? Oriol, what do you think? Everyone wants to get the race in, and, uh, and I can only imagine what's going on in the booth. I'm sure PT is pushing like, if I was there, we would start the race, <laughs> isn't he? Yes. <laughs> but let me tell you, PT, it is like Portland 2001. Remember that race that Max Papis won stellarly, and we all spun like idiots? Then this is what's happening today. It's just a shame. The rest of the track is good. There's just a lot of puddles on the front straight, and it creates hydroplaning that there's nothing you can do. And then there's only two more spots between 5 and 8, where the Honda sign is, and before the turn 13 braking. So once we, for a second, we had the front straight clear, they went to work on those two, and then the front straight was flooded again. And it's just, it's just out of control for the driver, it's a shame, you know. So hopefully it stops a little bit that let us uh, have the racing, of course. Uh, and yeah, I think the other, well, the other thing we talked about was, as PT said, let's run around in the yellow, but we don't want to see the fans get a raw deal either. They want to see some racing. Yeah, I agree with you. Like when, you know, some laps under yellow to see if just having the cars out cleans the puddles, because sometimes that, you know, that helps is one thing, but just to put laps in so we get to the mid mark, then we're cheating the fans uh, here and the fans in, on, on, you know, watching TV at home. We all, we all want to have a, a, a proper race. Slippery maybe, uh, but, but a proper race. So hopefully we can get it in. Everybody says, well, you got a break in the throttle. It's not quite that easy. It's not that easy. Honestly, like on the pace car, I, I'm, I'm not going to say almost crash, but I, I had a couple moments at, you know, 60 mile an hour, just because when you hit the paddles, the water doesn't go anywhere and the, and the car floats. So with these cars, it's not any easier. You know? All right. Well, John Rutherford, three-time Indy winner, crashed the pace car a couple times. So you'd have been in some elite company, son. <laughs> I think he's calling you out, PT, to get down he's there. He's calling you. So... Carlos Munoz, who is watching, we say hello to Carlos. He says, uh, Hinchtown, that was supposed to be a secret. I was keeping that quiet. That's about what you know. We don't need to repeat it, uh, about what James Hinchcliffe told Kevin. So uh, good to hear that very uh, detailed insight from uh, Oriel Servia as we go to Marty Snyder. Marty? Yeah, you know, Ryan Hunter Ray and I came back to the transporter mostly because he was freezing and, and shivering. So Paul was making, you know, kind of fun of the drivers who are shivering, but it's pretty chilly conditions out there, isn't it? Yeah, especially after we sat for a little bit and then we got back going again under uh, under yellow there, just just kind of recon laps. That's when it really, <laughs> I was shaking. Um, I'm a Florida boy, so I, you know, I need my warm rock. But anyway, yeah, it, um, it was pretty sketchy there on the front straight, even under yellow for a bit. Um, it started looking better that time. I thought we were okay just kind of, you know, making laps, getting getting the uh, water off the track. I think 24 Indy Cars does a does a pretty good job of of keeping keeping the uh, water off. So I don't know. I thought I thought we were going to keep going there, but um, yeah, this this restart was crazy. I um, I couldn't see I couldn't see two feet in front of me when we got down to the when we got down to the corner, and then all of a sudden there's a car sideways in front of me. <laughs> I thought I was hitting them. Uh, it was insane. Um, yeah, haven't, haven't seen anything like it. It's really sketchy in these open wheel cars, though. When you get down to the end of a straightaway like that, uh, like I said, you know, you're in fifth gear, just pulling, you know, pulling gears, and you can't see two feet in front of you. Just kind of maybe going off of something that you see in your peripheral, yeah. and kind of, you know, oh, I think the straightaway is this long. Let's break now. So that's how it works. Is it maybe some of the toughest conditions you've ever had to face in the in the cockpit of a race car? Yeah, that was really tough. Um, I, you know, we've had some sketchy stuff on street circuits too, in the wet at Toronto, when the back straight, when that was, you know, freshly paved, that was pretty nuts. Um, at Road America, I remember one year, um, you know, maybe 04 or something like that was, was, was pretty sketchy. But anytime when the rain's really coming down and you're on a road or street course in the wet, uh, yeah, it can be it can be pretty dicey. That's why it's a, it's so big to uh, start up near the front. Um, even then, as we were going, I, everything was I was I was getting a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker, burning the fronts off just a little bit. But then all of a sudden, I guess it started raining harder, and a river formed through 12, turn 12 there, and I had a big tank slapper through there. So hmm. every lap can change. Um, that's that's the fun part about racing in the rain, and, and the part that can really bite you too. But um, yeah, so far I, I hope we get back out there. I hope it just lets up enough for us to uh, go in a straight line. I understand that you're you're in the driver coaching business now. Your son is already in a go kart. What what is this about? Yeah, I'm in trouble, and he begs me every day to go. Um, you know, we, we started him off. His, his suit's not ready because he grows too quick. We keep ordering him suits, <laughs> and he doesn't fit in them. But that's riding, and uh, yeah, I set up a cone course for him, and just going through the basics and sharing, you know, sh sharing the uh, sport that I love with my son is a pretty special bond, and certainly going to be able to do that. I think more and. 
going to have to reach into my pockets more. If, uh, you know, we have three kids, three sons and uh, three boys that uh, you give each of them an equal opportunity, then um, I don't know. I'm going to have to have, ask Michael Andretti to form a, uh, a car team for him, I think. I was going to say, you know how this path goes, right? I mean, there's money involved after this point. Yes, that's, that is the problem. <laughs> Trust me. I realize that. We always say we want him to golf, and that's not a very uh, cheap sport either. So I don't know. We're going to have to figure something out. Hey, as long as they're all happy, I'll do whatever I can to facilitate that. that that's my goal in life. Townsend, you know what that's like, right? You put the kids in the race car when they're of age and let them have fun because you love the sport so much, too. Change the subject early and often, Ryan. <laughs> and there are more RHRs on the way with Ryden, Roxon, and Rhodes. Hunter Ray, look out for the RHR kids. There have been some amazing images this afternoon here in Alabama, but images that we're not really enjoying seeing, that's for sure, as the rain has got even heavier and this is perhaps the heaviest part of it as this cell continues to move through and across us here at Barber Motorsports Park and we just received a note that race control will uh, looking towards a 4.30 local time slot which is less than half an hour away and remember the end goal is just to get one hour of racing done before they can declare the race and points can be awarded so that's the big picture goal and I mentioned going to the break about uh, Chip Ganassi racing Scott Dixon the longest tenured driver for Chip at that amazing team however there's not many tracks on the IndyCar uh, schedule that have got away from Scott Dixon this is one where a win has been elusive Number nine, Scott Dixon takes second place here in Alabama. Dixon finishing second. Scott Dixon has been the runner-up all three times here at Barber. Dixon finishes runner-up for the fourth year in a row. This is his worst finish here, being third. Dixon on the podium again. The winner eludes him. Finishing runner-up is Scott Dixon. How many times has Dixon finished second at Barber? How many times? Five or six, maybe. For the fifth time, Scott Dixon finishes second here at Barber. I feel terrible for him. He just can't seem to win anything. There's lots of reasons why we haven't won there. Put him in the Penske car, maybe? I've been on the podium so many times in plenty of second places and never been able to win there. But this might be the year. We'll see. You can just tell Scott Dixon's friends feel so bad for him for not winning here at Barber. And look at that record here at the Barber Motorsports Park. You heard Jan Bika say it. His worst finish at this racetrack is third. How about that? That's impressive. But your, your friends feel awfully, awfully sad for you that you haven't won here, Scott. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a good place. I love coming here. It's it's a fantastic track, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we uh, we had it. We had a good good start there. The car was pretty good, and and uh, got to my last tear off, took it off before that restart, and I don't know what was on the visor, but I couldn't see anything. So, uh, couldn't even go. I didn't know where I was on the track as far as you know the, the front straight, and, and then there was a caution straight away, but. We lost, uh, I think, five spots in that sequence. Yeah. So, uh, bum for the team. Uh, hopefully, we won't make that uh, that decision again on, on whatever we did there. But uh, the, the PNC Bank car felt really fast, and you know we were closing in on Hunter Ray there uh, before the caution came out. And you know uh, we'll see what later today brings, or, or maybe tomorrow. You, you said early on the the conditions weren't that bad. Is it is it getting worse throughout the day? And is something where maybe we could go back green, Scott? Uh, I don't know. It looks pretty bad right now, and and you know it's just the visual thing. You can't really see anything, and, and especially on the restarts where there's a lot of standing water, it's just you, you're asking to have a crash. Which you know I know it's part of racing, and and you know some guys want to go. I, I was kind of on the fence. I didn't mind when I had my instant where I couldn't see. You know I was like I, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to come in the pits. I don't know what to do because uh, you know if you can't see anything driving an IndyCar at uh, you know in the wet at about 150 miles an hour, it's not not very easy. But um, yeah, we'll see what, what happens, what they decide. I think right now, you know, I think at the start of the race where it actually uh, wasn't really raining, it was it was pretty good. The first 10, 15 laps were, were a lot of fun. Uh, and then it started to rain quite heavy, and then we had uh, that incident, and, and obviously then it uh, went down from that point on. So I'm not sure what they're going to do, man. It's uh, I think everybody here has done a good job with drainage. You know, they fixed that right. in a lot of places from the years previous. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to, what to tell you. Well, let's ask you about what it's like. Obviously, you have no vision. Are you literally popping the visor up, trying to scrape inside and outside? I mean, you're trying to drive the car, too. Yeah, I was constantly trying to wipe the front of it. Uh, I think somehow, maybe between the layers of the visors, these anti-fog things, I think maybe I, there was a hole or something came uh, you know, delaminated and it started to fill that inner one. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, you're just trying to look at the line, follow the white line on the side of the track. 
and uh, hope for the best, you know. But the, the problem in that situation too is that I wasn't going when it went green. I was going as fast as I could, but then you got a lot of guys behind you that are probably trying to pass, and, and you know you can't see too much anyway. But uh, yeah, it's not a, it's not a great situation to be in. But uh, you know, luckily we we uh, came out of that unscathed, and you know uh, we've got a great car, and we can definitely come back and and uh, you know fight for a win. It's you know I think we're ninth now, but uh, we we can definitely make a run of that. Let's talk about the season so far for your race team. Big changes, obviously going from four to two teams. How's the dynamic a little bit different in 2018? Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely very different. You know, going from four cars down to two. Uh, you know, losing probably the loudest guy in in the paddock with TK. You know, sitting across you uh, in the engineering room. The engineering room, engineering room's a lot quieter now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's a different dynamic. I've I've loved uh, you know working with Ed. You know, is uh, new, fairly new to IndyCar racing, um, but you know, has shown definitely some some talent already. And uh, we have to see. I think as our uh, you know working together throughout the season, we'll, we'll get a lot more of a pattern where out so I think as we get uh, you know through changes throughout the season will be uh, a lot more uniform. I want to ask you about last week and go back to that pass Bourdais made on you you had a pretty good view of it I mean obviously they made him give the spot back but that had you had to sit there and go wow he pulled that off yeah, I didn't even see where he had, he had come from. Uh, what had actually happened is he the, the uh, overtake should have been uh, you know gone on out out just out of the hairpin, but all of us pushed it. It didn't work, uh, and then they manually overrode it and changed it, and then he hit it at start finish, and he had overtake. So that's why he came with such a big run. And, and uh, you know, I didn't even know he was there. I was you know focused on on the guy on my left to try and go around him. And I think it was some lap traffic, and and then uh, moved over slightly. And all of a sudden, I saw him coming. He's come through. <laughs> <laughs> coming through pit exit and uh, luckily I think Lee saw him you know coming because uh, had Lee you know turned in like he normally would that would have been a pretty big shunt but uh, I think visually it looked fantastic and uh, I, I know uh, Bordet probably took a pretty big breath once he got through that corner because it was uh, it was a lot going on. All right for Scott Dixon it's been a busy day some visibility issues but who knows we might get back going here at Barber Motorsports Park today and we're hoping the rain lets up a little bit we can get back to at least caution conditions but we'd love to see some more racing today from Barber. Welcome back to a very soggy Barber Motorsports Park where we have completed 22 laps of the Verizon IndyCar Series race and we're thinking that we may be able to go back racing here in about 25 minutes. Marco, do you think that's possible? Yeah, I didn't want a red flag to begin with, um, especially after that spin. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the more you sit, the more the track floods. So I think you need to uh, just get a, a line going. Uh, once we were up and going, it seemed all right. My spin had nothing to do with that. That was just a dumb error. So, um, you know, we'll see. I think that was a. I thought it was a dumb error. It might have put us on a good strategy. So we'll see. Um, these races are crazy. We all we're all racing to an unknown distance and time, right? So we don't know when it's going to end. Um, and so, you know, I, I was able to on the restart get back to the lead of this strategy right now. So, uh, who knows? It could end up working. Speaking of that spin, what were you feeling just before that happened? Uh, no grip. Not a ton of visibility, but, um, you know, that, that had nothing to do with a puddle or anything. It just totally caught me out, just a snap on the exit. So pretty frustrating. But uh, like I said, who knows with these races, it could end up being a blessing. Who knows? I don't want to ignore your pit crew, guys, because they're all standing under this tent here with us. How much does it mean for you to see these guys? They're sticking it out right there with you. They just even went and warmed up your car for you, and it's pouring down rain. Yeah, they're troopers for sure. Um, I think they're just trying to get TV time. <laughs> Thanks, Marco. He's 14th right now, Lee. Katie, thank you. Yeah, optimistic, hopeful, would like to get going again. He came into this uh, round of the championship 10th in the points and uh, would certainly like to leapfrog his way there. As we look at the cross-section, the overview of the Andretti Autosport, and we also should mention, because sometimes we're remiss to mention Brian Herter and the Brian Herter Andretti Autosport uh, collaboration there, which encompasses Marco Andretti across the Four drivers there, average finishers, Zach Veach 12th, Ryan Hunter Ray 10th, Marco 9th, and Alexander Rossi, the Long Beach winner and the guy who has stood on the podium every race this year, 2.3. That's pretty impressive from the Californian. Nice going there, that's for sure. Time to check in with uh, one of the rookies in this year's field. Kev, who you got? Yeah, Jordan King has been impressively fast. He was really good off the bat at St. Pete been strong in all three weekends. Your ups and downs so far this weekend, sitting 11th right now. How is this experience in the wet, which I'm guessing you've done before? Yeah, I have driven in the wet before, but not here or in an Indy car yet. Yeah. So there's a lot of learning going on, uh, especially as the race goes on. I'm still taking a lot of information on board. 
Would have been nice to have done a little bit wet running before a race, but we're making progress. Uh, we're getting there. So yeah, we'll see how the rest of it goes when, when we get back out there. Let's let people meet you a little bit. You have raced at a high level, GP2, F2 in Europe. You were teammates with Alexander Rossi uh, a few years ago, and, and he has high praise for you and you for him. Yeah, well, it's, it's good to hear that. Uh, when, when we were teammates, we played off each other's strengths quite well, actually, and we pushed each other. Uh, to, we were second in the team's championship, so you know, overall it was actually a really good year. I get on with him well personally as a friend, so I can't say that about many teammates I've had. How are you enjoying the transition to IndyCar and spending time in America? Yeah, really enjoying it. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying just you know, being able to be myself more, and the pace has been good as well. So the, you know, the racing's good fun. There's always something happening. doesn't matter where you are on the grid, whether you're at the front or the back, you're always having fun. Unfortunately, we've had a, a few small issues that have meant we haven't got the results we probably should have, but... You know, we've, we've been close to getting podium finishes, so overall it's been positive. All right, good luck. I'm going to want the umbrella back, though, before I leave. Yeah, thank you very much. Jordan King, Diff. Yeah, he's made his home in Indianapolis, and he's doing it alone on purpose. No parents, no girlfriend, no friends. This is a big mission to succeed in IndyCar and some uh, pictorial walks through history of what Jordan King has done. If you've ever been to the UK and shopped at a store called Sainsbury's, a grocery chain, his dad was the former CEO and at one point in time was being touted as perhaps a replacement for Bernie Eccleston to head up Formula One. We now know that didn't happen, but yeah, a lot of racing in the King family and uh, Jordan is really enjoying himself in the Verizon IndyCar series and he's come close to having a couple of very good results in his rookie season. Welcome back to a windy, rainy Barber Motorsports Park. No, that's not a human. Don't worry about that. Mr. Barber with a very good sense of humor. He has art all around this racetrack, and it's fantastic. If you ever get a chance and you're in the Birmingham area, come to the Barber Motorsports Park. You can go to the Motorcycle Museum. You can see cool art around the racetrack. It truly is the Augusta of racetracks. Also hanging out with me, Joseph Newgarden, and uh, the leader of the race currently. So you're saying everybody watches on TV says, man, you guys can go run, but it's a completely different story behind the wheel, I assume. Yeah, I hate it. I, you know, I, I know it looks a certain way on TV. Believe me, I've been in Europe. I've raced over there many times in worse conditions than this, but it, it really depends on the track, the drainage. Um, you have to think of the car style. I mean, this is an Indy car. We can race in the wet. That's why we have great Firestone wet tires. But, you know, it gets to a point where it's too much and it's oversaturated. And unfortunately, Barber, it's one of the best tracks that we go. It's one of my favorite. It's my home track. And in the dry, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, and with a little bit of rain, it's amazing too. But when it gets too much, it, it can be very, very difficult. So I think the start of the race, we were OK. You know, that sort of rain level was all right. And then it just started intensifying and building these puddles and streams. and it's really just difficult. So uh, I, I apologize to the fans. It's so great, the support we have. There's a lot of people that stuck it out. But, you know, that's, that's racing sometimes. We get these type of conditions at certain tracks where it's just difficult to deal with. How sketchy was the last restart we had? Your teammate, Will Power, wrecked, and you got loose immediately when you went to the gas. Yeah, I've not even seen this. So that's good. To, it's good for me to see what was happening. But, yeah, I, I about lost it as well. You know, what happened with Will almost happened. You see me almost lose it again. Um, that's just sort of the hydroplaning that we were kind of dealing with. And the problem is it wasn't just the front stretch. It was starting to pool on every straightaway. And so what, what happened to him was, was very easily could have happened to anybody. Um, and that's, that's what you don't want to deal with. I'm the leader of the race. I can see the best out of the entire field. I'm struggling with hydroplaning. I think the guys in the back couldn't see anything from the rooster tails. So, I mean, believe me, we hate it. We want to be out there running. I don't, I don't hate the rain. I want to run in the rain too. But I think it's just a, a sort of a condition of safety today. And, we have to come back tomorrow, and then that's what we'll do and try and get this show in. All right, let's talk about something you've kind of said from the beginning of the year. You said every team is going to have highs and lows this year because of this brand new car. Have you, have you seen that play out this season so far in the first few races? I mean, I think you're seeing an interesting IndyCar season, very entertaining. You know, for me, I wish we were a little bit more consistent, you know, dominating. I think you always, as a driver, want to be dominating the, the race season. But this year is going to be tough. This new kit, everyone's kind of finding their way with it. And we're going to all these different types of tracks. So, you know, St. Pete, we learned something. We kind of applied a little bit of it to, to Long Beach, but that's just the street course. Right. Then you learn about short holes at Phoenix, and you try and apply that to later on in the year. And this weekend, we're just learning about road courses. So 
think the common theme is up and down. I think people are going to be all over the map this year, which is going to be fun for the championship. I'm hoping we can make it a little bit more consistent than up and down, um, but we've got a great package. I think Team Chevy's done an amazing job for us. They've really given us everything we need this year so far to compete against Honda. And, uh, you know, having our primary sponsors with Hitachi and Verizon, our cars have been great. So uh, I'm excited for it. The Indy 500 is going to be a blast, and hopefully this whole championship's a great run. Of course, they have a win in the bank lead, so they're happy with that. But as it sits right now, tied for that championship lead. You, you can't be anything other than impressed with Joseph Newgarden. If you're a young driver out there, a go-karter or something, that's what you should aspire to, to be like Joseph Newgarden. He's got the whole package, and he's sitting in the uh, in the prime seat at the moment. Now, thanks for staying with us. Thank you for being very patient. We do have some news for you, and that is we will see you tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. So if you've got to go to work like most of us do, set your DVRs at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on NBCSN to finish this off. I'm going to ask you first. I'm not going to ask him. <laughs> I'm going to ask you first. But it's the right decision. It's the only decision. It is the only decision. And you can see it so clearly on that last attempt for a restart. Will Power totally blinded, mm -hmm. has no idea where the standing water is, and had no option even if he knew it was there, and simply turns the car that quickly. You simply cannot restart in these conditions. All right, Muscles. You've always <laughs> got to keep safety in mind, well, okay? Well, I'm just sad to quite sad for everybody that's here, the race drivers, the teams, the fans, all everybody that's in the TV compound, those guys standing out there in the rain, that we didn't get it in today. But tomorrow we're going to race, and we got guys in the back on a different strategy that are looking to win. So there's opportunity for Pagano and Marco to really jump to the front as soon as those pit stops happen tomorrow. I think it was interesting from the standpoint, which is something that you raised, Townsend, right at the very beginning. Very limited knowledge in this 2018 spec IndyCar in wet conditions. Now everybody's a whole lot more knowledgeable. They are, but don't forget that the race leader, as we sit here right now, Joseph Newgarden, did have the advantage of his Penske teammate, Elio Castroneves, who's not running the full season, as you know, only the Indy 500 this year, but had an opportunity to test here in Barber, and it rained. Every other team in the paddock, with a shortage of spare parts, said, we don't want to risk our cars. Who stayed out there? Roger Penske, Team Penske, and Elio Castroneves, and all of the information that they gleaned from, from that situation Castro Nevis could share with his teammates. They had video cameras on the car, in-car video, and that really, I think, helped Newgarden coming into today. You drove for Penske, Paul. You know, that's nothing new for that organization. They're always impeccably prepared. No, they're always ready to run. When they go to a racetrack, when I drove for them, it didn't matter if it was raining, snowing, hailing. Uh, they're there. They've paid for the track. They're going to go. So that's the way that they operate. And uh, right now, they're out front leading. Have, they're in the driver's seat for tomorrow. But watch for that other teammate in the back, Pagano. He's, yeah. he's on a different strategy that could win him the race. So for those of you just turning on to remind you what has happened, two red flag periods, a whole lot of rain. And as far as the running order, as we say, almost say farewell for today. And we mentioned a lot. We just heard from Joseph Newgarden. Bourdais has been the picture of consistency. Hunter Ray had the escape of the day, narrowly uh, avoiding a spinning willpower. Alexander Rossi is sneaky quiet there. So too James Hinchcliffe. And Zach Veach, the rookie who had food poisoning yesterday, felt like qualifying and practice yesterday was like being in a washing machine, has been resilient and very strong. Another rookie, the Canadian Robert Wickens. Takuma Sada, who made up the most positions in this race so far. Scott Dixon, who wants to come back after that visor problem. And his teammate, Ed Jones. I think we've got a lot to look forward to tomorrow. Certainly. I mean, Paul mentioned Simon Pagano already. Marco Andretti wondering if maybe, huh, you know, going out early might be uh, might be something that plays out well strategy-wise. If it's dry tomorrow, I think it's a totally clean slate. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with the whole group. What do you think, PT? Well, I think we're going to have a great race tomorrow. Obviously, we hope it's dry tomorrow. The weather forecast for the week doesn't look great all week, but uh, it's going to be, at worst, it's going to be damp in the morning for sure. We're going to race early in the morning, so it's still with all this rain. It's going to be offline. If a guy drops off in the grass, wet grass, watch out then. And we should say thank you and uh, for, for all of the track workers, all of our team, all of the production crew who have been so resilient uh, putting up with these conditions, but the track workers from Barber Motorsports Park in particular who tried and tried and tried to get this track drained and in a raceable condition. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and thanks for sticking around. Thank you for being with us throughout this afternoon. We did get to see some cars race for a short period of time. And reminding you that coming up next, it's NHL Live, followed by Predators Avalanche. That is Game 6. 
So repeating 11.30 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning on NBCSN for the conclusion of the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Appreciate your patience and look forward to seeing you Monday. Hey, in all corners of life, we ask for a second chance and we're going to get one today here in Birmingham, Alabama, as we welcome you to the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. It's round four of the Verizon IndyCar Series on a much improved day weather-wise. Just look at these beautiful conditions. Yes, not ignoring a few clouds above. However, we've got dry pit lane, dry racetrack and dry weather slick tyres on these race cars. We're ready to go in what will be a frantic hour and 15 minute sprint. Time for the command. Drivers and teams, restart your engine. That sounds good, doesn't it? The engine's firing, let's do it again, and the command over the radio, restart your engines. Let's do it as Townsend, we take a closer look at this beautiful track. Such a terrific place to drive a race car, great place to visit. And it all starts down in turn five on the start of this race in terms of a passing opportunity, heavy brake zone, downhill, bit of an off camber corner. And then you power out and look for a lot of over-unders and look for a lot of this. This is Spencer Piggott from earlier this weekend locking up the left front, very difficult to find the brake balance because it's downhill. And then you get to the lowest elevation on the track as you enter turn eight. You're gonna use all of the left side curb right here, just powering over that, kind of crashing down into the corner, gathering things up, and then trying to get a smooth run down the back straightaway. That leads us to turn 12, a very fast chicane, left, right, along with downhill and back up over Courage Crest as we ride on board with James Hinchcliffe. Just delicately balancing the car as it unweights over the blind rise. And that's a lap at Barber Motorsports Park. This place is fast, very flowy, requires commitment and finesse. This track, and Mr. Barber, George Barber, consulted the late John Surtees and the late Dan Gurney on the construction and design of this track. We say hello to Evie Gurney, and we're thinking, as always, of the Gurney family as we take you on board with thanks to Total Performance Engine Oils. This is Graham Rahal. He's going to give us this view, and you can bet at this track, Graham Rahal is going to give us plenty to enjoy because he relishes the opportunity to race here. We've spoken a lot in IndyCar Live about Zach Veach, and this is the Group 1001 on board as he heads down into the museum turn, one of the key spots on the track. And the mayor of Hinchtown, James Hinchcliffe, with Lucas Oil. That's the view we're going to get from the Lucas Oil Honda for Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports. And then we do a swift change to the points leader, Alexander Rossi. And by the way, Alexander is carrying our Verizon streaming camera. You can go inside IndyCar all season long by downloading IndyCar Mobile exclusively from Verizon, America's best streaming network. So up over Courage Crest as our man Townsend Bell coined the phrase and the spot last year and with thanks to Verizon you see Joseph Newgarden the race leader and he could leave here today with the championship points lead after four rounds. Now problems here for the Gallagher Carlin machine of Max Chilton. He stopped where Tony uh, Canaan stopped yesterday. He Not finally sure got he the car going again. Got an anti-stall, but one of the problems of cars sitting in at overnight, IndyCar sitting overnight moisture, is sometimes the electronic gremlins can creep up on you. So both Charlie Kimball, the other Carlin car, and Max Chilton experiencing difficulty and we understand from race control that he will not be able to resume his position if he can get going there goes oh, the he's field gonna lose a lap too so not only get his position back now he's down a lap so as we go on board with the total performance engine oils view of graham ray hall t bell why don't you dial him up Let's see if we can get him hey graham it's townsend bell in the nbc booth you got me Second time, bye. Try one more time. Hey, Graham, it's Townsend Bell in the NBC booth. You got me? Yeah, but I got you. Hey, man, totally different day. I wonder what does the track look like, those seams? Are they weeping at all? You see any moisture anywhere on the track? 
Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, there's going to be some weepers and stuff as the day goes on. Obviously, we've got a storm that's headed this way, it looks like. So it's going to be interesting, but uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can just uh, make our way through here. Get a couple positions. Good stuff. You're starting on reds. Looks like the way to go, you feel? Yeah, I mean, strategy could be anything today, but uh, yeah, I think reds, uh, new reds is the way to go. We've got another set of new reds. We can finish this thing off with. So we'll see how it goes. All right, thanks a lot. Good luck. So from Graham Rahal to Marty Snyder. Marty, what you got? Haley, the yellow flag is out, and guess what? That means Will Powers' team can start working on this car, and they have looked at it for long enough. Matt Johnson, the crew chief, said, I've been staring at it for hours now. They knew exactly what they needed to do. As Will said in Kevin Lee's interview earlier, it's going to take about 25 minutes to make this repair. They're pulling the 59 out of the way on the racetrack. They estimate they're going to lose about 15 to 20 laps getting this done. So why would they do this? Number one, they want to take advantage of if there's a wreck out on the racetrack and gain some positions. But number two, if they don't run miles on this engine today, they likely would not get a new engine for the Indianapolis road course, the Grand Prix coming up in a few weeks. So they need mileage on this engine today. And number three, they want to learn more about this race car. When they do get back out, Roger Penske not here for Will Power to call the shots today. John Boslog, known as Myron, with the race team who called the shots for Will Power last year, will be on the timing stand. But again, they think it's going to take about 25 minutes to get all these repairs done for Will Power. I'm looking at that car. These guys are the best in the business at Penske Racing, but this is definitely a patch together job because they're duct taping that underwing back together just to get it back on track. But here we go in practice one. These guys were all over the place on the first two days. And now that it's going to be a green track, it could be real slippery today. This is Alexander Rossi. He hit not once, but twice. He went off the racing surface. And it was a really eventful start to the weekend when we went back to Friday practice one. Joseph Newgarden got a little bit of air as he went sideways into that turn five gravel trap. Don't forget, guys, all of this drama was on a green racetrack because it had rained prior to everybody showing up. So we could see a lot of this sort of dramatic action on the opening laps here in the dry as we see Simon Pagino also losing it down in turn five. Then there was Rene Binder who nudged the barrier in the Hunkos entry. Then we fast forward to practice three and Paul, the action kept going with Scott Dixon. Oh, absolutely. But today, a lot of rain yesterday. You get off on the grass, Townsend, and you're going to have, you're going to slide all the way over to the tire barrier like King just did right there. Big left front damage for Jordan King. He was okay. They got the car fixed and he'll restart this race in 11th. So is that a sign of things to come as we get ever so close to going racing with just over an hour of race time? As Scott Dixon rightly described, this is gonna be a sprint and a pretty wild sprint on a green racetrack that was absolutely drenched yesterday's. Tony Kanaan in the ABC Supply AJ Foyt uh, car comes to pit lane. He's got some catch-up to do as well. It's been an eventful weekend and not necessarily a great weekend, Kevo. In the back and 20th, this is simply, as everyone has talked about, it's a very difficult one-stop race, so they're taking a chance just to add a little bit more Sunoco fuel to give them a better chance of doing it on one. I think that's a good call. Strong but if you're going to make call. it work, you're going to have to really save right away, which Tony Kanaan, I think, will be doing. be interesting to see how racy is in the first few yeah. corners. And remember, overnight, everybody was able to have their push to pass recharged as well. So we've got Team Penske, followed by Dale Coyne Racing with Vassa Sullivan, Andretti Autosport, followed by another Andretti Autosport car. Then you pick up Schmidt Peterson, then another Andretti car. It's been a strong weekend for Michael's drivers, that's for sure. So we'll see how this pans out. Are we going to see four different winners in as many races to start this season? Or is Joseph Newgarden going to get his second? Will Sebastian Bourdais get his second? Will Alexander Rossi get his second? There is so much to play for here today. If you're going to beat Joseph Newgarden at Barber, you better make some moves on the start, Paul. Absolutely. He's the toughest in the business right now, but this guy right behind him, on those scuffed reds, I think he might have a small advantage. Race director Kyle Novak and race control has clearly told the drivers, leader, leader's discretion 
Once that green flies, it can accelerate. This is turn 16, by the way. There's pit entry. Turn 17, Joseph Newgarden will rule the rules here. And he goes. Turn 17, the Team Penske car goes. And in dry conditions, it is time to bring the action. Let's go racing on a Monday. Good, clean through turn one, turn two. Yesterday, Joseph Newgarden had the advantage of clear visibility as we see Scott Dixon trying to make a move around the outside of Jordan King. Scott Dixon now falling back. Here comes his teammate, Ed Jones, with the run. Hinch looking down the inside. Gabby Chavez laps down there, but it's uh, Zach Beach on the outside trying to make some moves and hang with Hinch. Zach Beach clears, Gabby Chavez, Robert Wickens in that red and yellow car. There it is there, the Lucas Oil Honda. He's ready to pounce, he's ready to make a move. Spoke to Takuma Sato last night after the postponement. He loved yesterday in the wet. There he is there in the white, blue and black MyJack car. He's feeling racy here at Barber as we switch to his teammate Graham Rahal. Graham Rahal out the back is Zach Clayman de Mello who's two laps down, so doing everything that he can to try to make up lost ground, and he's going to try Look to stuff it up move. the inside. That's a, that's the old New Garden move right there. He almost pulled that off, so he's racing. Probably a little bit upset that he got a two-lap penalty yesterday, but he's running it hard. He's a Canadian teenager with a little bit of attitude. Oh, we haven't oh, seen that this. before, have we? <laughs> How about that? Zach Clayman DeMello, the IndyCar rookie, not racing like one. Now look at Pagano. Pagano just got... Ray Hall got upset by Clayman DeMello, and that allowed Pagano to slip through on the inside. That's what Simon needed. Inside move. Look at DeMello again. Oh, oh he almost collected Spencer Piggott. That Look. was very close. A little wide for Pagano. Graham Ray Hall's got to run. We saw these two a couple years ago. This same move, they came together, but Ray Hall backs out. What do you think, Marty? Pagano moving smartly, and PT, you were right at the beginning of broadcast. They are starting on the primary black sicker tires. They have two sets of sicker red tires here in the pit sitting that they can put on for the rest of the race. So you heard Simon say, we're going to play a little tire strategy today. That's the tire strategy. They think they'll have a massive advantage over everybody else, but certainly fun to watch them come up through the field as we have a battle further up front, Lee. See Graham Rahal furiously reaching for the right front bar. That's the front Andy roll bar trying to soften it up. So Graham Rahal with a lot of understeer early on. Tell you what, rain or dry, Newgarden has checked out again. Yesterday in the rain, he left everybody. Look at the lead he's got already after two laps. 2.5 seconds to be precise. Joseph Newgarden over Sebastian Bourdais. You're looking at the DHL Andretti Autosport Honda of Ryan Hunter Ray. Then back to Alexander Rossi, the championship points leader coming into this fourth round. Up front there, Sebastian Bourdais running in second and trying to hold off Ryan Hunter Ray is the only one in the top three that started on scuffed reds, the softer compound. And he was a little bit worried about being exposed, but that does leave him as one of the few with the set of stickers in the back pocket. But Dale Coyne told me, we're not sure what the strategy is going to be. We're not sure if you do one stop, if the reds, you're going to want them to last an entire one. We've got problems on track, Lee. Spencer Piggott. Spencer Piggott is in trouble. Now he finally gets the fuzzy Chevrolet going. What okay. happened there? He's all, uh, definitely uh, off. Tires all dirty and muddy, so he was definitely off the racetrack somewhere. He turned that Firestone black into a Firestone yellow. Let's see what happened. Oh, he got ran off. I don't Looks know. Like, no. That's DeMello, who was very racy just a lap earlier with Ray Hall. Here comes Piggott up the inside. Oh, jeez, look at that. DeMello just keeps going. <laughs> what that a was, move. It was pretty sweet. <laughs> nice slide. DeMello continues. There goes Piggott. So far, it looks like both cars will be able to continue without like hitting. A, like a scene out of the Fast and the Furious movie. Something. Tokyo Drift. Rail slide. He might be from Montreal, but that was Paul Tracy-esque. That was pretty cool. That's how it looked from Graham Rahal's view. I'm not sure what happened in the previous corner between Piggott and DeMello, but Piggott really wanted to force it up there with authority. I'm not sure that was on. Well, do you remember a lap or two ago, DeMello tried to get him on the inside at turn five, and I think Spencer may have taken exception to that. Well, they're back on the move and back up to speed again, but that was exciting action. But up front, right now, Newgarden is running a second to lap quicker than everybody in the field. 
that's what 3.6 seconds looks like. First to second to Ryan hunter -Ray, the 37-year-old father of three. He's got some unfinished business so far already early on in this season because he had a very eventful Long Beach. Tony Kanaan is serving a penalty for unapproved pit service. So some frustration for the IndyCar veteran. So we thought that was a good call. And look at this. A little earlier than expected. They've got Will Power ready to go. Matt Johnson says to Don Texter, fire it up, Tex. Let's get this 12 oh. out there. And Zach <laughs> Clayman DeMello is chopping everybody up. That this was rookie is driving unbelievably today. That was Marco Andretti that he just muscled aside. I like his style. <laughs> he's two laps down, but I like his style. Nothing mellow about the way he's driving right now. So this was the situation with Piggott. Nice clean pass up the inside a couple laps ago, but then I think Piggott tries to stay with them and returns the favor. But, you know, that next corner, that next chicane is really single groove, and we'll see it again. Piggott with a run. Gets up the inside, but really not all the way up the inside. I'm not sure that DeMello knew he was there. And I'm sure DeMello was thinking all the way down the hill as they were stuck together. Well, look, Dude, get off me. Here's these two guys back together again. Ray Hall and DeMello battled all day yesterday in the rain. DeMello's got a move on the inside. Watch this push to pass coming on. And he's going to make a move down into five. Let's see if he slices down the inside. He's looking. Inside move is a key spot here at turn five. He's not going to do it. But this 19-year-old Canadian, he is driving as flashy as the shoes that he produces. He and his sister own a shoe company. And it's named after his initials, Zach Clayman DeMello, ZCD. He's got Hollywood stars wearing his shoe brand. He's a stylish guy. <laughs> well, right now, the style is in the driving. Charging hard, using up push to pass, two laps down, and not a care in the world except going to the front. But for Newgarden, it is smooth sailing at his home track. Can tell you that his teammate, Will Power, is back on track, but nobody has anything for Joseph Newgarden. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by Tag Heuer, official timepiece of the IndyCar series. And by United Rentals, official equipment rental services provider of IndyCar and proud sponsor of Graham Ray Hall. Isn't that a beautiful view? There's more than 700 acres here that make up the Barber Motorsports Park. And a quick reminder that you can watch every IndyCar race online on mobile, tablet and connected TV devices with the NBC Sports app. And simply download the app. We'll find out more at NBCSports.com. It is ever so useful. As we welcome you back, IndyCar racing on a Monday. Lee Diffie, Paul Tracy, Townsend Bell ready to roll. Katie Hargett, Kevin Lee, Marty Snyder and Robin Miller are working pit road on a sunny Monday, which gives us a lot of relief to say this. And Joseph Newgarden, who's won two of the last three years here, is putting a clinic on Townsend. He is just easily pulling away right now. Watching lap times, Newgarden quickest lap of the race so far. But Alexander Rossi, oh, here's an answer on a, on a dumpster diver, Kevin. Two stop strategies. We hear Barry Wanzer coaching Ed Jones in, the second year driver, at a podium finish at Long Beach. Car pretty good, he thought, and getting better throughout the weekend in the dry circumstances. So they can go hard now. No fuel save needed for Ed Jones. Right now, like Long Beach, if it goes yellow, he will go to the front of the field. So he's got to not make a mistake, Townsend, on cold tires. Uh, and hope that he can grab a yellow or get the strategy to play out. But right now he's cycled to the back. But if it goes yellow, it will put him in the lead. Could, but he'd probably still have to make another stop to make it to the end. And the yellow is probably what the front runners would need to make it work on one stop. So and the yellow doesn't come, really won't matter. Everybody will stop twice to get to the end. And folks, keep a watchful eye in the top left of your television screens. 55 minutes remaining. That's what it's all about. Not laps, it's time. By the way, we see Spencer Pickett here, Paul, on camera. No action taken in that incident yeah, between I think was, uh, Spencer Pickett. I think and, it was a racing incident. Pickett dives to the pit lane, but I was amazed that he didn't flat spot his tires because <laughs> uh, he pushed DeMello sideways for about 100 yards. It was a bulldozer, wasn't it? 
And after that contact, Spencer Pickett thought that maybe his steering was a little bit off, but they're not quite sure. So they're just going to do a turn of front wing into this and some sticker reds, Marty. Pit stops beginning, Katie. You see top left of the screen, 54 minutes left in the race. But are we racing to that time or to the rain? That's the question. You see rain coming. Teams are saying down here it's about 40 minutes out. So that makes a, a sprint race even a little more urgent, doesn't it, Townsend? Certainly. It looks very ominous off in the distance. See, the wind is blowing pretty hard, so not sure which way the clouds are going, but there it is, coming from the south, southwest. The dot marks our location for Barber Motorsports Park, and it just looks like maybe some of that is building a little bit, so that'll add a little flavor to this deal at the end with 54 minutes left to go. It's definitely gotten darker. The sun now has gone away. You can see the overcast. I'm not ready to see another radar image after yesterday. <laughs> not just yet, it's too soon. New Garden leads convincingly. When you want to lead a race, you want to lead it handily, and you're looking at Joseph Newgarden, who boasts nearly an eight second lead. Can you believe that already? Look at this, there's nobody home. He's racing all alone. There's Sebastian Bourdais. Bordes. See you later. Yeah, Bordes has finally gotten away from Hunter Ray. Hunter Ray was right on his tail there for a little bit, and he's been able to stretch away as we see Hunter Ray come through. And here's Wickens in a battle here with Zach Beach. Gabi Chavez is a lap down, and Sato right behind him. And Pagano in the picture now has just cracked the top ten. So Wickens gets by Beach. Next car ahead for Wickens will be his teammate, James Hinchcliffe. Pagano's in the top ten but it gets incrementally more difficult as you get to the front of the grid as we see Wickens there in the black and red car, followed by Veach. Hinchcliffe's about five to six seconds further up the road. And look at the clag, as David Hobbs would call it, all the marbles offline building. That's what happens when you go hard on a green racetrack with all the rain, washed all the rubber that's there, and it's very abrasive on the tires. So I think tire degradation is going to be a big deal as we see how Wickens Got by Veach, turn five, nice and clean up the inside. Key overtaking spot, probably the key overtaking spot on this track. Look at this. This will be fairly straightforward, Paul. Yeah, well, he wasn't right there when he got there, but in the braking zone, he just went in real super deep. No lockups, got in there nice and clean and forced Veach to the outside, and he had to concede. Robert Wickens, of course, and Zach Beach to that point. A couple of the new faces in the Verizon IndyCar Series this year. And here's another one for Hunkos Racing. This is Rene Binder, the Austrian driver, third generation in our Chevrolet driver profile today. Good to have uh, him in the series and learning a lot all the time. And while he's a third generation driver, a little one step removed from that, his uncle, Hans, was a Formula One driver, did something like 15 or 16 GPs. So motor racing runs in the Binder family. A lot of parallels between downhill skiing and race car driving, rhythm, flow, line, apex. You a good skier? I actually am. How it's about you, PT? A uh, long time ago. I haven't skied in a long time, but this guy right here, Pagano, is trying to make work of Sato. Dixon has gotten by him, so hopefully he's got a little run right here. Might have an opportunity. Will not issue for the right front. Jordan King now released in the fuzzy Chevrolet for Ed Carpenter Racing. Learning all the time in his maiden Verizon IndyCar series season. I have to say, when you look at Takuma Sato running here in the MyJack car, he is ageless. He's 41, he's done it all. He stood on a Formula One podium, he's won the Indianapolis 500, won on the streets of Long Beach. And. Marty, he's being chased by Simon Pagano in the Menard Chevrolet, trying to make up more ground. It's been a weekend of catch-up for the Frenchman. It's been an entire weekend of catch-up, but they made a lot of progress since we've gone back to green, plus four spots since that restart. So now in the top ten, as you guys mentioned a moment ago, and I think they're thinking of a one-stop strategy, trying to save a little bit of fuel while making some progress as well as teammate Joseph Newgarden on the opposite end of that, just going as fast as he can. But a lot of these Hondas, obviously not the Team Penske cars, but a lot of these Hondas think Maybe they might be able to do it on one stop, Katie. 
Simon Pagano chases Takuma Sato. Yesterday, Takuma was rubbing his hands together, so excited about being able to race in the rain. He improved 10 positions yesterday. Now today, they're not quite sure what they had in the drive, but Takuma's liking it so far. Right now, they're debating on what tire to take next up. They're with a lockup with Dixon right there, but Takuma debating on what tires to take next up. They're thinking sticker blacks, Townsend. He's, got, he's all over the back of Veach. We saw him take a look at the inside. Veach left the door open. Dixon was thinking about it, locked it up a little bit, nearly got in the back of him, but he's been trying to get by Veach here so he can chase down Wickens. This section of the track here is fascinating, something that TV doesn't do justice. The undulation on this Barber Motorsports Park track is fascinating. And you're looking at the orange and blue PNC Bank Chip Ganassi Racing Honda of Scott Dixon from the car of Zach Veach. And Dixon is in his 228th consecutive IndyCar start. He's a four-time oh, champion. He's strong and there. you don't want to mess with him. Strong to quite strong, you'd say. Mistake from Zach Veach to get a little wide there. And now you've got the most successful driver in the series coming up the inside to make the pass. Hit a really strong apex through turn two. Was able to hug the inside line. Beach got a little bit wide. Just keep these guys back behind you. There's multiple lines through turn two, but he was just, uh, Dixon was able to hold that tight line and get clean air and get a good drive off the corner. Wasn't a big mistake from Beach at all, but Scott Dixon will absolutely pounce on any opportunity. And now Dixon has clean track in front to go catch Robert Wickens. The Total Performance Engine Oils on board of Graham Rahal with dark skies above. Can we get this run today? You betcha. Let's stay positive. No doubt about Joseph Newgarden. Ten seconds out in front. If you have never been to Birmingham, Alabama, I couldn't encourage you enough. There is so much going on. It's a very historic city. Uh, whether you look at uh, through the Industrial Revolution, the Civil Rights Movement, now it's a big banking town, some wonderful restaurants here, a lot of history, and there's a good vibe around Birmingham, Alabama, and you're looking at one of the largest philanthropic efforts in the history of the state of Alabama, thanks to Mr. George Barber. Over 800 acres, and this is a gift. This is a gift to the state of Alabama and the city of Birmingham. It was all the vision of George Barber. He wanted a place to store his motorcycles and ride his motorcycles. And he has built arguably the most beautiful racetrack in the world. And it's not only a gift to the state of Alabama, it's a gift to motorsports enthusiasts worldwide. Robin, what you got? Well, think about this. Uh, you just got to remember this. This is 40 miles from Talladega. So when they announced this race, we're like, oh my God, it's in the middle of NASCAR country. Nobody's going to show up for an IndyCar race. Not only did they show up to one of the nicest tracks we've ever been to, they showed up in really big crowds because this is probably the fifth or sixth best attended IndyCar race we have. And they do a great job with Zoo Promotion of promoting this race. We had a hell of a crowd on Friday and Saturday. God knows what the walk-up would have been if it would have been nice yesterday. But I just think it's amazing because when the track was built, it was for motorcycles. We're like, oh my gosh, we're never going to have anybody show up here for an IndyCar race. And, and they won't be able to race. Not only have good crowds, but they also have good old fashion good old racing marty hey robin you see some of the leaders coming down pit road originally alexander rossi was going to try and make it on one stop they bailed on that but joseph newgarden the leader coming down pit road right now he said these tires are absolutely gone on this car way too much oversteer for him you're going to see a wing adjustment here and they're going to go with sticker primary tires for joseph newgarden coming down pit road and going back out on the racetrack alexander rossi now coming down pit road, sort of bailing on what they were trying to make a one-stop strategy, now going with two. He, too, saying his car way too much oversteer and that the tires are gone as well as we ride down pit road with a 27 car. So Townsend, a lot of shuffling of strategy going on down here on pit road. Yeah, and some mud on Rossi's left front, so I wonder if he got off track coming to pit lane. You can see it there, fresh Firestone Reds going on. And I, go, go. Clear out, clear out. I think barring yellow, I think we might have to see everybody stop one more time for a splash to get to the end. 40 minutes too long? 40 minutes too long, you think, yeah? Let's see if Rossi did in fact go off. The tire's clean here. 
Ah, just no, no, he didn't go off. He went off. Well, he did just drop a wheel intentionally to shorten the track ever so slightly. That's what you do. If you're going to win an IndyCar championship or a race here at Barber, you have to find every advantage. Well, and, and let, that, let that story circle all the way back to Will Power. Championships have been won on a count back. Championships have been won by one point. Will Power is out on track circulating and he's in 21st position. That's not last. So he will get some points. Kevin? So Sebastian Bourdais out in front now since return from Formula One. He has won as many races as the entire field except the three Penske's and also Scott Dixon. So he has been on a roll the last few years. Now Dale Coyne had said before the race, we're likely to do as we watch Simon Pagenaud pitting, likely to do what the leaders do, but trying to stretch and maybe still do it on one, Marty. Pagano going with a two-stop strategy. He went from 14th to 8th on that run. And as we told you, they have two sets of sticker red tires. That's what they're going to go with here. He also wants a wing adjustment. He said the car had too much oversteer as well. And a lot of the teams here on Pit Road talking about the rain getting closer. This is going to get interesting if it comes out in the middle of this pit stop cycle, guys. Well, we know now that Bourdais was saving fuel and Newgarden was going flat out on a two-stop strategy. So now the trick for Bourdais is can he make these tires last, because the other guys were having tires go away, can he make these tires last and maintain good pace and hopefully get another win under his belt this year? Let's take a ride with Joseph Newgarden. Oh, sorry, uh, James Hinchcliffe, pardon me, as he chases down Ryan Hunter Ray. So as we watch James Hinchcliffe, who was, by the way, told to turn it up just a moment ago. That's when he got Rossi, and they told him, go get Hunter Ray. His teammate Robert Wickens on the right side of the screen. He's in. So maybe Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports splitting strategies. Unless there's a lot of yellow, Wickens, who was running fourth, is going to need to stop one more time. Hinchcliffe may still be trying to do it on one, but he's been using up some fuel lately. I'll tell you what, he's using up some tires, too. He had a big slide oversteer coming off of turn five. We see guys coming out here. Wickens coming out, blends into, into a nice gap here behind a group of cars. Behind he's Alexander keep, Rossi. Keep King behind him on the cold tires, who's right there behind him. And we have the split screen here watching Hinchcliffe attacking the back of Ryan Hunter Ray's car. On board with power, remember 16 laps down. He's out gathering information and maybe trying to pick up a point or two in the championship. And you can see Veach behind him still struggling with the balance of his car. Veach and, and uh, Ed Jones battling it out. So James Hinchcliffe was using up fuel. We see him trailing Ryan Hunter Ray. That's the position they had on the track. Hunter Ray right in front of Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe does have a set of sticker reds at his disposal. He's going blacks again, so he could have those sticker reds if they take one more stop, Marty. You see Graham Rahal coming oh. down pit road as well. A little tight there for Ryan Hunter Ray and James Hinchcliffe leaving pit road. Again, these Hondas trying to make it on one stop. This is right on the edge of what they can do for one stop. Graham saying his car has a little too much oversteer as we watch that battle of everybody leaving. There's Graham Rahal on the right hand side, a wing adjustment, and also those sticker primary tires going on. And hopefully, enough Snooko fuel to make it to the end of this time race. Beach here really struggling. This is Marco Andretti, his teammate, looking outside. Beach has got a just packed up with cars. He's still out there struggling around on these reds. And look at sideways laying down tracks out of the corner. <laughs> he goes Rossi, Rossi on his teammate. Ooh. Thinks about it. So here we see the advantage between new tires and old tires. See Beach so much understeer. He's just pushing way wide. Wickens gets by easily on the inside, but that's the difference right there between new and old tires. And that green fuzzy Chevrolet of Spencer Piggott. Almost got into the coming in. Almost got into the back of Robert Wickens before Wickens was able to make that move on. Zach Veach, who's heading into the pits. That was the radio call. And you'll see him dive off right here. And Takuma Sato went with sticker reds at the beginning of the race, and he was not happy with the way they fell off, so he's going to go with the more stable over the long run sticker black sleep. Oh, wait, also we see Zach Veach also pitting. Paul noticed how he was going wide. Well, Zach is also learning to save fuel for the very first time in his IndyCar career. He, too, is going to go with those sticker blacks for this run. A lot of front wing being put in there, so he's got a lot of understeer. As we see Rossi getting by, getting by Ed.
So Rossi charging hard, 35 minutes left to go. Two cars that have been able to stretch things on fuel, Sebastian Bourdais and the fuel-saving master, Scott Dixon. There he is. Nobody gets better mileage than this guy. The question is, will it be good enough to make it on one stop without any yellow? It's the tortoise and the hare. Bourdais running one minute twelves, New Garden one minute tens, two seconds a lap difference. Marty? And guys, for Scott Dixon, there might be a problem. Remember at St. Pete, he got that speeding penalty on pit road because they didn't have a pit road speed limiter. They're laying out for Scott Dixon right now. He does not have that limiter once again, Townsend. So what is he going to have to go through to make sure he doesn't speed on pit road? Well, that's, that's a great point. It depends on whether or not Scott Dixon has a speed setting on the steering wheel. Some drivers don't ever want to care to look for speed on the steering wheel because it's frankly irrelevant unless you need it to manage your own pit speed manually so they might be telling him to cycle to a different mode on the steering wheel that'll give him actual running speed and then he'll manually have to keep it below that number you have to err on the side of being conservative though race leader is in here's Sebastian Bourdais and they were trying to make it another lap or two longer. They said if they got to 56 or 57, definitely good on one stop. This is one lap short, but they were 1.2 seconds slower last lap than Joseph Newgarden, so they had to come in. He's got the sticker reds for this final stint. Half a turn up front wing, Sebastian Bourdais a little bit longer on the fuel, trying to make it the rest of the way home with no more stops. We'll see what his pace was like. He was running off the pace, so we'll see if he cycles out in front of Hunter Ray, who's way in front so he's got a nice gap now between third play at the effective third place on the road and if you're looking for the LED light display behind the driver's head just near the roll hoop there uh, it's not operating this weekend there was a slight glitch in the system usually we get to see what the pit stop time is where they're running uh, in the race etc but that's not operating this weekend so Dixon right now has outclassed everyone on fuel savings to get to this point. He sits 6.8 seconds behind Newgarden. You lose about 26 seconds with a stop. So that's what Newgarden, who looks to be on a two-stop strategy, Newgarden has to manage that 26-second delta throughout the rest of this race if it stays green. Yeah, but the pace is just not there. Last lap was a 12-4. The leader's running 10-6. Here he comes in the pits. Now let's see if he can maintain that 50 and not get a penalty. Don't forget, Paul, that pace is on used tires to New Garden's old tires. So when Dixon gets fresh rubber, he can still save fuel and turn fast laps. And guys, because of that pit road speed limiter not being work, not working for Scott Dixon, they had to give him a manual number to hit. 6,700 RPM. See the Borde go by and Hunter Ray going by as well. So 6,700 RPMs in first gear. And you've got to wonder if he's going to lose a little bit of time here. Going to be interesting to see where Scott Dixon does cycle back out. He actually said the black tires didn't like him in the middle part of the set, but at the end, they were much better. So let's see where Dixon cycles out and see if he was able to keep that speed, uh, speed limit on pit road the entire way. He's lost a bunch. He's going to cycle out in 12th or 11th. His teammate Jones has gone by. Wickens, Andretti, King, Piggott, and Pagano. On board with Joseph Newgarden who boasts a monstrous lead of some 20 seconds, but there's a lot to play out in this final half an hour. You're watching the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama as we welcome you back to NBCSN's coverage riding aboard. The man who led the championship coming into this race, Alexander Rossi of Andretti Autosport, and reminding you that you can go inside IndyCar all season long by simply downloading IndyCar Mobile exclusively from Verizon, America's best streaming network. Let's check in with Marty Snyder. Marty? And Lee, we talked about the speeding on pit road or the limiter not working for Scott Dixon. Uh, we're going to ask Mike Hall how they were aware of that fact. And they also went another lap or so in Scott Dixon saving the fuel to be able to make that happen. Mike, how were you aware of the fact that the pit road speed limiter was not working on the car? Well, with, uh, with telemetry, uh, we can see that. He started losing uh, items on his dash, so we just talked talking talk through it on the radio, and then we just had to go old school on getting in the pit lane with a rev limiter, kind of like those guys uh, from North Carolina do. <laughs> how about from here out? Obviously, you're in a good position fuel-wise. How much can Scott keep up with that, though, on his page? Yeah, I don't know. You know, a lot of things can happen, but uh, we played to our strengths today, uh, starting where we were starting. We're trying to do this, obviously, on one stop. We think Bourdais is trying to do the same. A lot of these guys are going to peel in here if it doesn't rain and uh, and if we don't have big yellow. Uh, so we'll see how it goes here. 
A lot of factors down here for the strategists. And again, they're talking to Scott every lap about the fuel number. Clearly has the fuel to make it, but he needs to hit that number, Townsend, to make it to the end of the race. Well, if he's starting to lose stuff on his dashboard, he's obviously got some water in there, Townsend. Possibly could lose his shifting ability. Possibly, but he could lose all the data and still get radio transmission from the team on the fuel mileage he needs to achieve to make it to the end. Hey, guys, you want to throw in a curveball? Hit me. Prediction, six minutes. Six minutes until we see some rain falling here at Barber Motorsports Park. As if we didn't have enough yesterday. This could make things interesting with time running out in the Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Stay with us. You rejoin us with a terrific battle between two championship winning drivers in the Verizon IndyCar Series. Scott Dixon executes a move on Simon Pagano and that PNC Bank Ganassi Honda is flying. But Scott Dixon has a huge margin, a huge gap to try and catch up on the race leader Joseph Newgarden if he stands a chance of winning. But the big but is what will the rain do? And will it be substantial enough to affect the end of this race with less than 24 minutes to go, Kev? And fuel is also a concern for some like Ryan Hunter Ray, and he pitted three laps earlier than Sebastian Bourdais, who's right in front of him. So Michael Andretti calling the strategy for Hunter Ray. We know you're saving fuel. Are you going all out? Is there any chance you come in one more time, or is it just try to get to the end no matter what? Yeah, we hope not. We're close, but we'll see. It's gonna be really close. We're gonna give it up. We're giving up a lot of pace right now to try to get there. Would you like to see it shaken up a little bit with a little more rain? Does that help your cause at all? Uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit. I mean, it'll be interesting. It depends how much rain it is and all that. It'll definitely mix things up. All right, should be fun. Thanks, Michael. Here's the issue they have. These guys are all trying to make it to the end, Townsend. But Newgarden's going so fast. Right now, he could pit and come back out in front. He's got a 27-second lead over Bordet. We heard pit, pit, pit. Is that Rossi's radio? Yeah. So that would be interesting. As Rossi just pitted on lap 49, about 15 laps ago. So starting to see some spots of rain on the camera. They're not going to put. Do you want any changes? OK, flat out to the end again. And guys, you heard Rob Edwards right there saying that's a strategy here for Alexander Rossi as soon as he could come to pit road and go flat out into the end. He wanted to go wide open. No more fuel saving for him. So coming early of the two stoppers, Alexander Rossi feels like they can go all the way from here and he can run as hard as he wants, the primary tires, and a quick stop by the Napa Bunch. Not sure that really works out. I mean, Rossi probably just simply can't make it because if a yellow comes out, I think Newgarden might be able to, to stretch it. Certainly Bourdais and Dixon and some of the others that stopped a little later would be able to just make it to the end easily on fuel. Unless rain comes. So while we're in a commercial, I want to take you back to a radio transmission. Have a listen. And just keep going, but don't cause a yellow. If you have a bigger problem, get to a safe zone off track. Okay, no. So unusual to have a team manager say, don't cause a yellow, except in this case, the reason for that is that Scott Dixon, who's trying to make this on one stop, doesn't want a yellow. He wants Newgarden to run out of fuel up front or have to stop again for sure. And some of the other guys that pitted around Newgarden, like Hunter Ray, like Hinchcliffe. And look how quickly he's caught. He being oh, Dixon. Getting a little wet out there. Both of those guys had a slide, and we see raindrops on the camera, so rain now starting to fall. We can't say enough about King. We haven't seen him all day, but he's having a nice day. Right now in sixth, as Dixon whistles by him on fresh tires. Inside move, turn five, fairly straightforward. Let's, uh, let's head down to Marty Snyder. Marty, give us an update on the rain as we watch this replay of Dixon and King. Is it getting heavier? It is, you see the incredible save for Scott Dixon right there going into turn one, a nice catch by him, eventually getting by King. But yes, picking up Diff, it is starting to rain a little bit harder here on pit road. So now the interesting decision, do you stay out there and you're seeing cars starting to slip around or do you go with rain tires coming up shortly, Kevin? And then here's the real quandary for those as they have been working on some issues inside the cockpit for Ed Jones, but those that are on a two-stop strategy, if you come in now and then it rains hard enough to have to come in one more time for rain tires, your chance at a result is all but done. 
This was interesting. I just was looking at oh, Jordan King, weeper. and it weepers. looks like weepers are starting to come through. I think that's what got Jordan King loose just now. Let's watch again in slow motion. Here comes Jordan King. Watch the right front right there. Right here. You can see the see water, the water shoot up. The water shoot up off the tire, and then he right after that, he went sideways right there. So rain falling, water table's high. Water's coming up through the track, and it's going to make it tricky going into turn one because that's a super fast corner. Speaking of super fast. Raining hard now. Look at that camera on it. Joseph Newgarden is in control. He's in command. But will it stay that way with less than 20 minutes remaining? You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Honda, an official vehicle of the Verizon IndyCar series. And by Total Performance Engine Oils. Keep your engine younger for longer. Proud sponsor of Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan Racing. Yes, those raindrops are increasing here at Barber Motorsports Park in Alabama. Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell and Paul Tracy. This is going to be an exciting end. Look at that orange and blue car belonging to Chip Ganassi Racing of Scott Dixon. Just continues to check them off one driver at a time. He rips a tear off, maybe make it two. However, even though he's passing cars one at a time, there is a massive gap to this guy. Joseph Newgarden, the race leader, Whoa. boasts a 24-second lead over second place Sebastian Bourdais, but a nearly 40-second lead back to Dixon. And the raindrops are starting to fall here in Barber. The question is, can a new garden or anybody, frankly, on slicks hang on to the car with this amount of moisture? This is high risk. High anxiety for any driver, Paul. Look at that, it's starting to snap on him. Yeah, that lead is now starting to evaporate. Bourdais, it was up to 27 seconds as we look at Dixon and Wickens. But now Bourdais has clawed it back to 23 seconds and he's pulled well away from Hunter Ray. He's 10, almost eight seconds ahead of Hunter Ray. Who's gonna be the first to come to pit lane to take rain tires? That's the question. It's a huge gamble, but it could pay off. And as a driver, when do you make that decision? Just too many snaps? Well, you have to think about, if I go too early, I'll burn up the rain tires on a track that's too dry. And, so, your, pa and your pace isn't there. You go out too early, but the flip you, you go so slow on rains when it's not totally wet, wet. There you but hear Tim Sindrick. for rains. This is big risk, big risk. And you heard the call there from Tim Sindrick saying, pit this lap for rains. And Newgarden has said a couple of times, it's raining. And then the last communication was, it's legit raining. And I can tell you, pit road is getting damp here. So they're going to go to rain tires here for Joseph Newgarden. As you said, Paul, big risk, but it could pay off big for Joseph Newgarden, who's been the dominant car here at Barber today, Kevin. Marty, I think Newgarden is in the driver's seat right now. Sebastian Bourdais assumes the lead, but they were really hoping that they wouldn't need to pit for rain tires because they were good to go the rest of the way. They had already told him to turn it up, go as hard as you can in the conditions. For now, Bourdais staying out. They're hoping somehow the rain dissipates, but obviously they have to pit. The new garden is back in control. And for Scott Dixon, I think it's a huge advantage because rain tires are not fast when it's this dry. Oh. And this one lap for Scott Dixon could really help him close the gap on New Garden. The rain continues. Oh, there he goes. This is the right call, but the question mark is will he burn those tires up in two or three laps? And Pagano had made the call that he wanted to come actually a couple of laps ago. They finally come down pit road. They would have been the first one on the rain tires. And Scott He's Dixon, going. we've been talking about him all day long, a little bit longer on that stop for the 22. They are now talking about rain tires. Dixon saying it's getting worse out here. So the team that was trying to do it on one stop, maybe considering coming down and getting rain tires here. Yeah, and every one stopper, that strategy has been eliminated. So all the yep. benefit is gone. So for Scott Dixon, it just hasn't played out. He's going to have to do it on wet weather pace. Right now, we got to see Bordet has an 11 second lead over Boy. Newgarden. And can he tiptoe this thing around for the next however many minutes? How many minutes do we have? 12, to go? just 12 under 13. Minutes. Can he tiptoe this thing around and, and maintain that gap? Right now, he's got a lap time. It dropped way off. It went down to 117. Right, drive behind you. Inside, inside, inside. So right, right now, it looks slicks are still faster than wets. Yep. And remember, Dale Coyne has a history of winning rain affected races through good strategy. Remember Carlos Huertas in, uh, in Houston several years ago? Can these guys keep it on track and not fall off the island on slicks?
listen to how patient Newgarden has to be. He's got two problems. The track, not super wet, so he's trying to save the tire. He doesn't want to lean on him too hard. Also, the rubber's cold. He's just on an outlap. So he's being very careful not to destroy the wets. If he does, he'll have to pit again for a fresh set. Huge for Bourdais right now. It's a big gamble by Dale Coyne, but we know he loves to gamble. The pace has really slowed down. He's down to a 117.6. Remember, they were running 110s, 109s. He's, He's staying out another lap. Waiting for we timing. We have less than 12 minutes left. We have less than 12 minutes left. I will watch the New Garden Hunter Ray battle and let you know. That's the voice of Craig Hampson, chief engineer, race strategist. This is getting interesting. Think about all the wet weather running that Bourdais done when he was in Europe with Peugeot team. As we see the five come in the pits, all the time when you run in 24-hour races, Townsend, and you're running in the middle of the night in the rain. All right, nice. Off come the slicks, on go the wets for Hinchcliffe. Meanwhile, Newgarden just did a 124 lap, Bourdais 119, so Sebastian Bourdais lapping five seconds quicker in these conditions. He's got to hang in there. If he pits, his chance at winning is effectively gone. But he can't make a mistake. Race, Sebastian, you're winning the race. About half the field is on wet, the rest on dry. This is like trying to sprint as fast as you can on wet grass. And so important what Craig Hampson is doing for Sebastian Bourdais. His race engineer is giving the driver what every driver wants in this situation, which is information. How am I doing? And keeping his confidence up, telling him you're winning the race. You're the fastest car in the field right now in these conditions. So all he's got to do is concentrate and keep it on the blacktop. Here is whether you think you can keep the car going at a decent pace and on the track. That's your call. Oh, the pace just slowed way down for Bourdais. Down to a minute 22. Hunter Ray hits pit lane. He can't hang on anymore. That's why the call went out from Craig Hampson, race strategist and engineer. Can you keep this pace up, Kev? Ryan Hunter Ray, it was his decision. Ray Gosson told him, you make the call, and about 30 seconds ago, he said, I'm coming in. Same thing for Sebastian Bourdais. It's his decision. He's trying to hang on. Robert Wickens has also been running in the top five or six. He's in for the wet Firestones right behind him. Hunter Ray with a nice quick stop. Well, Dixon's the only guy as well that hasn't pitted. Dixon and Bourdais are the only guys now that are still out there on slicks. And I can tell you, folks, just looking at our commentary booth window, it is pouring. Well, there's a whole bunch of cars that are going to try to nurse it to pit lane. They still have Slicks, Paul, Rossi, Andretti, Piggott, Hunter Ray, Ray Hall, we saw just pitted. Here's the thing, if they catch a yellow, somebody spins out, goes in the gravel, we've only got a few minutes to go, and then you're running around under yellow trying to get it back going. Bourdais could win this race if somebody spins and it goes yellow. You're right. Another lap of rain like that, and I'm off. There's your answer. Your call. Tell us what you are there doing. we go. We got a guy off the track, don't get stuck. Rossi's got slicks on. There's his teammate, Hunter Ray. That was close, so Bourdais is telling him, guys, this is ridiculous, I can barely hang on, but Craig Hampson knows if they pit Bourdais, it's they're over. out. You have a 13 second lead. You have a 13 second lead. There is just over eight minutes left. You are watching one of the most controlled, disciplined drives from Sebastian Bourdais, a four-time IndyCar champion. Dixon. Scott Dixon says, I've had enough. He gave up. This is a game of chicken at this point. Who can hang on? Well, you won't find anybody that's smoother on the throttle and more controlled as a driver as Bourdais. Bourdais looks like he's going to stay out again. Yeah, coming. Oh, he's, he's coming. He says, I'm coming. Eight minutes remaining. Do you want to add front wing? And that 13 second lead is down to nine now between Bourdais and Newgarden. Scott Dixon serviced and sent. You can see how slow he's going now. He's really had to back the pace up now. It's just so wet. Rooster tails now coming off the back of the cars. And Newgarden is on the move. The first on reins. He's conserved them. He was losing time. But now they are in, in and they're warm. And you just can't hang on anymore when the track is completely wet. I don't know. New Garden's not going that fast, Paul. Bourdais sort of hanging in here, but He's he just coming. knows he can't take the risk. He's coming. As much as we can get, what no a shame. Delay. What a shame for the Sealmaster team. 
See where he cycles out. Hunter Ray has already come in. Newgarden back to the front. So Hinchcliffe, Wickens have already done their reigns. And Hunter now, Ray, we'll see where he can come out and main, see if he can maintain Kevin his second place position. They're going to add front wing, no fuel. So we'll see how quick the Dale Coin Racing, Vassar Sullivan, Pit crew is just a tire change. There's the big, big turns of front wing. Borde's chance to win is probably gone, but still a good chance of a result if everyone can stay on track. You never know. Hunter Ray goes by. New, uh, still could be a top five finish. Hinchcliffe's going by in turn one now. He comes out of the pitch. Hinchcliffe whistles by, but Wickens is right there, right at the exit. Here's Dixon and Ray Hall. This is further back for sixth and seventh. And yet again, Graham Rahal is just six and a half minutes away from producing another solid result to keep himself in fourth in the championship, riding with Joseph Newgarden. Wickens has just gotten by Bourdais. He's on hot rain tires. Bourdais still getting up to temperature. Now Dixon will be the next car behind Bourdais, but he's... Oh! Spencer Pickett. Almost a yellow. But Piggott might be able to continue. He refires the car, it stalled, he dumped the clutch, jump started it, and the Fuzzy's car is back underway. Now he's just trying to make sure he doesn't get clobbered from behind. And that was an amazing save if you consider where that was on the racetrack, exiting turn two, coming up over the hill. There's very little runoff to the left or right. And now it's just full chaos out there. Well, it's all gone sideways for Rossi. He went through the gravel trap, lost a lot of time, and he's faded all the way back to 11th place. Just made a pass for 11th. He was running up in the top four at the beginning of the race. Tell you what, guys, this race for second could get interesting between Hinch and Hunter Ray. Hinch has been, James Hinchcliffe has been putting in some very impressive laps. And there you saw Robert Wickens immediately behind him. So Wickens was able to get by Sebastian Bourdais. So Bourdais dropped back. Dixon is sixth, Ray Hall seventh, Sato eighth. Really solid day for Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan racing. Pagano is ninth and Marco Andretti tenth. Wickens right now is a second a lap faster than his teammate chasing him down. Board A right behind him and a big gap. As we see Newgarden here as a close call, almost ran it off the edge of the track there. He's way out on the outside at turn five. So very similar to what Power did a couple years ago and ran off. Whoa. So. No mistakes there, you got a huge lead. 20, 20 second, second lead, lead for Newgarden right now. Don't forget that yesterday, as we ride on board with Newgarden for the replay, oh. whoa, just almost loses it. Boy, he has fast hands. Yesterday, Bourdais was the fastest car in the wet until the ra race was halted at around lap 20. And Townsend, Tim Sendrick has reminded Joseph Newgarden, listen, you're not racing anybody right now except the weather. Just take care of it. But it's hard to be patient inside the race car because even though you got that big lead, Townsend, you want to run as hard as you can. I do, but there's only four minutes left in the race with a 19-second lead. So Newgarden knows now what he needs to I'll do. I'll tell you what makes it harder to drive. These guys have gone back to a dry weather setup. They put the cameras in stiffer springs and now they're in the rain yesterday they softened everything up made it much easier to drive in the rain and now you're seeing guys slip around a lot more because these cars are set up for the dry see that big understeer he's got no front grip in the front of that car and then snap oversteer on power joseph newgarden is en route to a second victory in the season his third in four years here at barber motorsports park and how about this, Lee? Think about the rookie year that Robert Wickens has had, the performance at St. Pete, his first oval at Phoenix where he was so strong, went to Long Beach very impressively. Robert Wickens right now, the fastest driver in the field, his first time in an Indy car in the wet. This guy is, is an amazing talent and continues to demonstrate sort of wisdom and technique beyond, well beyond his experience. And he's got a lot of experience in the rain. Last year alone, he did eight races uh, in the DTM series, in the wet, double week, double races on weekends, Friday and Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday. He said half of our races last year were in the wet, so he's the guy that's on the move, chasing down a podium. And we might see a battle with his teammate before this thing's over. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in the race. Last lap, that last lap again, Hunter Ray was quick with a 21-1. Wickens 
at a 21-2. Hinch at a 21-2. So everybody lapping pretty similar pace, but Newgarden has Newgarden, slowed way yeah, down. 23. He's got a lap carb in front of him, but he's definitely got a huge lead and can tiptoe this thing around now. Two minutes left. Next time by, basically two laps left. The Hitachi Chevrolet and the Penske team on the number one have had an amazing weekend. And listen, to be honest, and I think I think I can speak for you guys too, we were all expecting a little more chaos than this. I really was. I thought there would be just guys frantic to try to make moves and pass guys. The only uh, real aggressive driving we saw was from Cayman DeMello, who was really making moves. But this guy right here has been in full control all race long. Here to go, here to go here. That's the voice of Tim Sindrick, president of Team Penske. Two to go is the call. As they run right now, Newgarden would snatch the championship points lead back from Alexander Rossi by 13 Whoa. points, but it's not over yet. Here's Jordan King going off. It's gonna be Looks like to he'll be able going. to rejoin. Turn five, got, got wide, went out in the gravel. Townsend, what was your best truck? Come on, quick answer. Middle Ohio. PT? Uh, Long Beach. Long Beach. This is Joseph Newgarden's best track. Headed to be the first three-time winner in IndyCar Series history on this beautiful road course at Barber Motorsports Park. He's one and a half laps away from victory. And what a weekend it has been. He won the Verizon P1 award two days ago in qualifying. He led every lap yesterday in the wet, which there weren't many, and he's led 71 laps in total in this Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Bit of your old school teacher coming out there. Come on, quick answer. <laughs> you started out teaching English, right? No, PE. PE, excuse me, PE. <laughs> I wasn't a real teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that was most definitely your old PE teacher coming out. Uh, yeah, yes or no answer. Let's move it along. I hope you need Final lap coming up. Down to 12 seconds from 20, so he's really back to pace down. 23s, one minute, one minute 23s. Uh, the other guys, Hunter Ray, Hinchcliffe, are running 21, so he's really listened to Cindric and slowed this thing down and going to bring it home. You know, uh, we mentioned, I think it was yesterday, Paul, and even in qualifying, we said to young drivers, to go-karters, if you're aspiring to do something or be like someone, this guy is your perfect model because he's got it all. He's got the charisma, he's got the speech, he's got the presentation, he's got the driving acumen. He's got it all, but it's been a long road and he needs to thank Ed Carpenter, Sarah Fisher, Wink Hartman, uh, everybody all the way along. I spoke to Ed Carpenter about it a couple of days ago and he said, I've got, we've got uh, a real sense of gratification and, and accomplishment in being able to nurture Joseph. And he said he remembers the day they went out to lunch and Joseph said, I'm moving on. I've got an opportunity to go to Team Penske. And as a driver and as a team boss, Ed Carpenter said to him, if I was in your shoes, I would do exactly the same. There's no hard feelings. And you're watching somebody who is very special. Joseph Newgarden feels at home because his real home in Tennessee is not far away. And Joseph Newgarden wins the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama to just put a stamp on it and own this place. Dixon's oh. not done with Bourdais yet. Dixon is all over the back to come to the last couple corners. Dixon slices oh. down the inside. He's going to have the outside line for the next corner. Bourdais will have the advantage, oh. though, in the last corner. There could be contact. Two, no. Two four-time champions. Drag race. Drag race. Who's going to get it? To the line, it's going to be Bourdais. Brilliant stuff. Two four-time champions going at it. Fantastic stuff. And that's huge for Bourdais. He holds on to third in the championship battle. As Graham Rahal comes across the line. He'll finish. Sorry, Newgarden comes across the line. Graham Rahal seventh. What are they saying at Team Penske? Let's head there now. Celebrating a win at Barber Motorsports Park once again, as you mentioned, Lee. So let's chat with Tim Sendrick. How big of a handful was that from the timing stand with the rain at the end? Yeah, you know, you never know what was going to happen. So we were trying to build a gap, obviously, to all those guys who were doing it on one stop. But we felt like we were going to, it was going to be tough for us to do it on one stop fuel-wise. So um, he made it look easy today for sure. And um, yeah, the rain came at the right time. And all the rest of it was really Joseph's deal. What sort of magic does this kid have at this place, his hometown racetrack? He's obviously confident here. You know, he's, he's a guy that's, he's committed. You know, he's committed in all ways. And 
this track's a, a track that you got to be full commitment. And, um, you know, with him, we felt like an aggressive strategy was much better play to his strengths and, you know, sitting there hoping that we could make the fuel mileage. Team Penske, Joseph Newgarden, go to victory lane once again here at Barber League. And you know what, Marty? Team Penske is incredible. It didn't win the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup race, but it did sweep the Supercars Championship races in Australia with Scott McLaughlin and now here with Joseph Newgarden. The Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama is complete, finally. Yes, racing on a Monday, and it might not be as boisterous victory circle as usual for Joseph Newgarden, Marty, but he's still going to celebrate just as hard. Uh, still celebratory for Team Penske and Joseph Newgarden, no doubt about it. His home racetrack, Nashville, just three hours away. His Preds won their series last night, and he does Nashville proud today. Guy, I got to tell you, how eventful did that rain make it at the end, Joseph? Uh, more eventful than I would have liked, but uh, you know everyone did a great job. Um, how about uh, you know Team Chevy today? They, they gave us a great engine and uh, good fuel mileage, good reliability. That's what we needed to win this race. And you know it's it's great having Hitachi. We had Verizon, we got them a victory, now we got Hitachi victory. So thank you guys. Uh, everyone at Team Penske did a great job. But like you said, that was more eventful than I wanted it. I mean, it was seemed like you know smooth sailing for the most part. We weren't having any yellows, which which we were hoping no yellows today. But then that rain crept in, and I couldn't believe how long everyone stayed out. It just, it was really risky what they were doing, but I understand why they were doing it, and I'm glad we made the call to come in so soon. Well, how aware of you what Bourdais was trying to do out there on those slicks? Because he had a fairly significant lead on you. Yeah, I knew what he was doing. I mean, same thing with Hunter Ray. When, when he came up on me, I, I, I asked him, I said, is he still on slick tires? And at that point, you could still probably manage him, but, man, it just kept getting worse and worse every lap, so more and more risky. The, the problem is we put the reins on a little bit earlier to protect, and I kind of fried the fronts because, you know, these things aren't designed to, to work in the dry. So in the dry, I, I kind of overcooked the front end. Then I had to deal with that when the rain actually came. So, you know, fortunately we had a big gap. That's really what I think helped us win the race was just building that gap over the, uh, the beginning part. Third win in the last four Barber races. Would you be cool if they added like four or five races here a year? Yeah, I like it here. You know, we could do the whole series at Barber. That'd be great. Thanks for, uh, you know, some of the fans that came back. I understand most people can't make it, but um, they stuck it out yesterday. They were, you know, they were dealing with the wind and all the rain yesterday. They, they're just great fans. So thanks for coming out, everybody, and some of the people that came to watch this. And uh, it's, uh, it's a good day for us at Team Penske. An eventful weekend for Joseph Newgarden. They had a spin on Friday, the pole on Saturday, the rain on Sunday, and then on Monday they get to victory lane as it starts to rain harder in victory lane, Kevin. Yeah, Sebastian Bourdais is taking cover for a moment. He joins us now along with his team owner, Dale Coyne. I want to start with you for, first, Dale. Uh, were you guys in the catbird seat if you didn't have to come in, if it didn't rain at all? We were in the catbird seat for a second. Um, and then we were hoping that Lane Rain would be, he did some good times on the dries in the wet, but the, just, the wet just kept coming, so we had to bring him in. Did you have a chance of maybe being able to get past Newgarden if he had to come in? We thought he was going to have to come in for a splash and go. Well, he did come in for a second stop, but then he put his wets on, and he had, he had it because everybody ended up coming in. So obviously, if it stayed dry, we'd have won the race, but uh, he had to come in, and that gave him that gave him a splash. Sebastian, I want to start with that race to the finish line. Have you ever raced side by side in the rain to the line with, in this case, another four-time champion? It's Scott Dixon. Yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, we, we completely lost the, the wet tires. Um, I have no idea why. Uh, the last two laps, I was losing something like three seconds a lap, uh, which, I mean, didn't really matter at that point. We just uh, were in it to win it, and uh, and we did everything we could, and uh, it was it was seemingly going to be good enough because I had saved the load of fuel and I wasn't going to have to save very much uh, once Joseph had done his, uh, his splash so we're I think we, we had beaten him but yep the sky opened and that was that. And you tried to hang on for a long time and hung on on the slicks in the rain longer than anybody else. What were those few laps like? Well it was just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and then uh, you know that wanted to go for the win, so I, I tried to give it my best, but uh, it beat us. It lost us more positions in the end, so it wasn't the right thing to do. But uh, yeah, I just we're going for the win. So good show, though, and you're third in the championship. Dale Coyne, Sebastian Bourdais, Katie. And it was a good day for Schmidt Peterson Motorsports as they come away with a third and a fourth place. James Hinchcliffe coming away with his first podium of the season. James, what were you thinking when it started raining again? I just, just one of those like, come on, come on, what are we doing here? I feel bad for the fans as much as anything. But yeah, we're driving around out there and it's like, hey guys, it's getting wetter. Okay, it's getting wetter. Wet enough for rains? No, not wet enough for rains. Wet enough for rains? Eh, pit for rains. Are you guys sure? And it was the right call. So like big props to the guys. Uh, solid weekend for us, you know, after, like I said before, coming here, not a, not a great test. 
you know, two cars in the top ten in qualifying, two cars in the top five in the race. Pretty, uh, pretty proud of these boys, everybody on the aero car. It's uh, going to get a couple Hondas up there and maybe not uh, top seven of the podium, but we took out the rest of it. And Robert, you have a lot of experience racing in the rain because of your time over in Europe. We'll do a little umbrella handoff here. But were you actually glad to see it start raining? Um, I was having to save a lot of fuel uh, in that second stint. So once Dixon started getting close to me, I was thinking like, oh God, maybe I'm actually going to have to give this one up. And then the rain came, so the fuel mileage kind of happened naturally. So uh, yeah, it saved us a bit. But overall, I mean, great job by the guys. Like James said, I was a little gutted that uh, we came out into a big bunch of traffic and I mean, it made the race fun, but uh, a little bit frustrating as well because people off sequence and whatnot, but we lost a lot of track position there. I think we uh, we could have, both of us probably could have been fighting uh, for higher steps on the podium today, but I think we need to do a bit, little bit of a better job in qualifying. All right, thanks for the cover, boys. I'll let you guys go get dry. It was a successful day for SPM. Robin. Ryan. Started, restarted fourth, finished second. Good day. You got by New Garden, and I saw your guys keep they took the rain tires out and then took it back. Did you have a couple second thoughts about coming in? I was saying, you want to come in? I said, I'm fine. I don't know I don't know what, what, what you wanted me to come in so early for, but all I could see was the moisture on the visor, just little bits of, uh, you know, dispersing across the visor. Track seemed okay, and um, it, it was just tough to tell. Then all of a sudden I had a few inconsistent big snaps coming out of, like, five, and I said, yeah, we better come in. You have to be so careful in that circumstance. If you come in too early on a drier track, you can, you can burn those reins off in two or three laps. So... Uh, I think we came in at the right time. Looks like Bourdais stayed out a little bit too long. Um, but we had great rain pace, just needed a little bit more time there. Um, this 28 DHL team did great all weekend. This is the first weekend we've had that we haven't had a problem. Um, and uh, and we finished second. So it's it's a nice relief. And hopefully we can keep this momentum rolling. The points are tight right now, so that's good. And uh, we're looking forward to the month of May. I mean, that's that's uh, that's what it's all about. So Okay, you're sixth in points. And it hadn't been a start that you wanted this season, but you're going to Indy where you're always strong. Yeah, hopefully we can be strong. We haven't been on track one day yet at, at the uh, at the speedway, but looking forward to that next week. And it's just uh, it's going to heat up pretty quick here. So um, all in all, though, great great uh, weekend from the team. We rolled off with a car that we weren't really happy with, and we kept chipping away at it, and just kept making it better. And, and like I said, no problems in qualifying, no problems in the race. We finished second, so I'm I'm relieved with the result. Um, obviously, we need to get back to winning, though. All right, thanks for your time, kid. Lee. Yeah, that was a much, much needed podium for Ryan hunter Ray, especially after the uh, troubles he experienced on the streets of Long Beach. It's Joseph Newgarden's day, but a day that shapes his championship in an interesting way. We'll tell you more when we come back. There's definitely a feeling here in Alabama of, whew, got that one done, got it in, even with a little bit of rain at the end to spice things up and make it interesting for sure. But uh, nobody could stop Joseph Newgarden of Team Penske as yes, weather has been the talking point, whether it be good or bad, as we take you all the way back to yesterday, the original start of the race, and the conditions were just terrible. They were challenging, they were treacherous, and Joseph Newgarden started the way that he finished today, but we're still continuing, and this was a sign of the times for Marco Andretti, slick and slippery. Loses it down in the museum corner there on the throttle, was able to continue, but then lap 11, Charlie Kimball goes off, See a blue car with a tail light. That was Ed Jones. Kimball claimed contact. Ed Jones said, ah, I'm not so sure. At lap 16, we start the restart. Watch Newgarden get sideways right here. Whoa. Guys are slipping and sliding. Can't get the power down. And then Will Power, whoo, right across the front of Hunter Ray, slaps the wall. They were unable to work on that car until the race started today. He came out 20 laps down, did some practicing, did some testing. And then it went red. There you go. Graham Rahal telling his buddies, whoo, I almost lost it. Then lap 27. Today, the restart in the dry. Totally different feeling for these drivers. And New Garden checked out right away. There were some good battles throughout the race. This one was the highlight. Spencer Piggott, Zach Clayman DeMello. Watch this. Spicy stuff down at the museum. And there was no penalty there. That was good. It was, hey, hard racing. Gonna have to start calling that the owl move. Yeah, yeah. Here power. comes Power back on track after getting his car fixed overnight. Well, really this morning, he couldn't get going until they finished it. We see Newgarden come in, and he's the first guy to take rain tires. He said, I was a little early. It's so easy, like I said in the race, to burn those tires up. And then Bourdais on the slicks finally gives up the ghost, says, I can't drive anymore. We waited too long. 
And he came in for his service, which took the opportunity of the win away from him. Speaking of victories, ninth career victory for Joseph Newgarden, back to back uh, here at Barber and three in four years. There was a drag race from turn 17 to the checkered flag between two four-time champions in the sport. That was for fifth place and Sebastian Bourdais got that, but it's Newgarden's victory. Uh, an amazing run. How about that guy who had the drag race, Marty? Well, it shows sixth place for Scott and Dixon after that drag race you mentioned, Lee, but, but there was a lot of story between the start of the day and the end of the day for you. Let's start off with the, the pit road speed limiter issue. What happened there, and were you thinking at the time the one-stop strategy was going to really pay off for you guys? Uh, yeah, that was, you know, another kind of downside. It's been just, I don't know, the rough start to the season. You know, we just, uh, whenever, I think the one-stop strategy would have put us third quite happily. Uh, but obviously the rain mixed that up and I think we maybe pitted two laps too late on that situation and lost a, you know, a bunch of track time and Bordet did the same thing and, and we found ourselves together at the end there. But, uh, you know, um, I don't know, the PNC bank car was, was fast, it was good on fuel mileage. We were able to get uh, the window. I think the, the five and six weren't going to make it on fuel had it gone dry uh, to the end. But uh, is what it is, man. I don't know, we just can't seem to, to break out of this funk right now and hopefully, uh, you know, we can, we can get on our way here shortly and get some good results. Do you think the electrical gremlins were maybe because of the rain yesterday or what, what could have caused it? Yeah, I don't know. We lost all uh, wheel speed sensors, which is quite odd. You normally might lose one and then you have fail safes for that, but uh, you know, lost both fronts, which which makes it impossible and had to go off RPM. And then you try and play that really safe, right? So, um, you know, we were way down on, on pit lane, losing, you know, probably two or three seconds each stop just in, in that function. But uh, I don't know, at least we salvaged you know, some points, but, but uh, to be honest, nothing to be happy about there. Maybe to put a smile on your face, the last lap with the 18. That looked like a fun little battle. Didn't didn't quite work out, but you almost got him, didn't you? Yeah, um, I was I, I was going to run him wide in in uh, in, in 16, um, but he gave me room earlier, and then uh, obviously he gave me room on the exit. But as soon as I had to lift a little bit more because I was running out of track, it turned the OT off, and uh, he had got to the OT, and before I realized mine was off, it was too late. But uh, had the OT stayed on, I think we would have got him on the line. There you go. It's sixth place finish for Scott Dixon Day, but again, trying to shake those early season gremlins, Katie. And it was a seventh place finish for Graham Rahal, and he was one of the guys that elected to stay out a little bit longer on those slicks. How much of a difference did that make in your day, Graham? Well, I think it made quite a lot. You know, I, I was just constantly replaying in my mind, you know, how was my power down yesterday in the wet? You know, could I get off this corner any better than I am right now? And at the point in which I felt that that transitioned, I came in. I mean, yes, it was wet. It looked really wet, but I was still able to get around the track and you know, and get off corners decently well. And it was just the first time I felt, you know what, in the high speed, it was starting to slip and slide a lot. I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bail out now. And I think it helped us quite a bit because I don't know how much time we made up, but obviously we were behind Simon and, and came out quite a ways ahead of him. I never saw him again. And, uh, you know, so that, so that helped us, um, you know, quite a bit. It was all around a great day, you know, for us. Uh, we were good in the dry. We were able to make up a lot of spots in the dry. And, um, you know, in the wet, it was all just about, you know, limiting any damage. And speaking of the dry, you had a, a great battle with your teammate, Takuma Sato. Yeah, well, Takuma, you know, I got to thank him because as you can see here, I got a great run. I was all over overtake. And, uh, you know, thank God he didn't, you know, he just, he, he didn't make my life tough, which he could have, you know. So I got to go see him and, and thank him. Yeah, for sure in the dry, we were quicker than him. In the wet, I think Takuma was a little quicker than me. And, you know, he was, he was coming there at the end. But um, seventh and eighth today for us, it's a, it's a heck of a good day for, for this whole uh, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team. And obviously, you know, with us and United Rentals, our turns for troops raise a lot more money uh, to help our vets. And we leave here third in points and we move on to Indy. So, you know, this is once again a, a great day for us because we, we limited as much damage points wise as we could. And, um, you know, and ultimately, uh, you know, we, we even last week, this week, we've scrambled in times when it's been tough and we, and we come out, uh, you know, smelling kind of like a rose. So hopefully we can keep that going next month. And your dad just came by and gave you some smack talk about he's better than you and the slicks in the wet. This is your chance to throw down the trump card, yeah? No, oh, it's just amazing, you know, how much better these old guys get, you know, as the years go on, the stories get great. I had to sit at dinner and listen last night about how great he was, too. So, uh, you know, uh, for sure, we, we both had our success in the rain. His record's far better than mine, so I just need to, you know, eat it. But... Uh, you know, I think he's going to be really happy tonight, and I'm sure Dave is, and I'm sure Mike and everybody. We get no damage on these machines. We're going home, and uh, you know, tough conditions, tough, tough race yesterday and today, and uh, we're heading off to uh, to the the Grand Prix with, uh, I think, with very high hopes. Yeah, and a lot of momentum heading into the month of May is always good, Lee. And Katie Graham mentioned uh, the month of May and Indianapolis. We want to remind you that.
Our broadcast friends at ABC have the IndyCar Grand Prix first up. Uh, that's on Saturday, May 12, and then, of course, the big one, the Indy 500 on Sunday, May 27, as always, on Memorial Day weekend. However, on the 30th of this month, there will be an open test, and I believe that Joseph Newgarden, today's uh, winner, will test the new IndyCar windscreen, which is that clear screen that goes around, and Scott Dixon tested it earlier this year at Phoenix with really pleasing feedback. Uh, and reports said he just felt a little bit hot in the cockpit, but that can be easily fixed. So Ju Joseph Newgarden is going to test IndyCar's version of a cockpit safety device similar to... So Formula One has the halo. IndyCar's making good progress with their windscreen. Should be fascinating to see how that works at Indy. I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to add more head protection for these drivers, especially at speeds up to 240 miles an hour at the straights at Indy. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of players involved have been doing some testing out at Air Force Base in Nevada. PPG involved now. They want to be involved with this windscreen. So great things coming forward in terms of safety for IndyCar. That's kind of a snapshot of the weekend right there, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of moisture in more ways than one. We're not done with yet. Stick around. Hey, there's nothing like some playoff hockey at 7 Eastern on NBCSN. The Bruins look to close out the series up against the Maple Leafs north of the border. And over on CNBC, Game 6 in Columbus as Washington tries to win their fourth in a row to eliminate the Blue Jackets. As we welcome you back to Birmingham, Alabama, and we check in with Robin Miller. Robin? All right, this young man, Zach Veach, started out sixth and held his position for a long time. And then what happened? Oh, we had something go wrong. We, uh, I lost one of my adjustments in the car, so we, uh, we really burned off the front tires, the front reds. A lot of the guys behind me started on black, so they had the consistency. But, man, once the reds went, it felt like I was driving without a front wing on the car. Just no rotation at all. We were hanging on for, uh, for everything we could. <laughs> when the rain starts uh, and you have to completely touch your mindset, is, is completely different. Was it almost a relief to have rain because you were going to burn the tires off then? Yeah, it was actually because, you know, the rain's the great equalizer. You know, if someone's struggling a little bit, if the rain comes up, you can kind of carry the car a little more. And uh, luckily, I got to stay out there on slicks a little longer, just trying to make up positions. And I think that got us up to finishing at least 13th today. So it recovered some of it. But uh, yeah, just uh, what a weekend. Rain yesterday, dry rain today. Uh, I guess this is IndyCar racing. <laughs> uh, the good news, uh, your car is in still one piece. All four wheels are rolling. The team's still happy, and you're getting to go, to go to Indianapolis. So I just think for the first four races, you got to be thrilled beyond belief. I think so, yeah. Uh, you know, the first couple of races were a little rough, but with Long Beach, and we had a lot of promise that we didn't get to make make happen at the end of the race today. Uh, I think things are swinging in the right way. So I get to drive an Andretti car at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the Oval April 30th. Have a pretty good uh, history there, so I'm excited to see what the car feels like right. in a couple of weeks. We'll see you in May, kid. Thanks. Kevin. Robin Zach's teammate Alexander Rossi also big picture would feel pretty good about the first four races. This is the first time not on the podium, though. It was a challenging day, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we uh, three years here, we haven't really had, had the pace that we've been looking for um, really the results that we wanted so that remains a little bit of a mystery but um, you know at the end of the day we it was just kind of a, a race about survival um, we couldn't make the tires last we couldn't really hit a great fuel number um, we tried to be pretty aggressive on the on the dry tires and, and and stay out and survive the rain hoping that it would dry up none of it really worked um, so sometimes you have those days but um, you know we'll focus forward on the next one it, it was obviously um, you know, I hit in, in, in the point swing with Joseph, but, uh, you know, it was great that Ryan got on the podium, and uh, I think we have a very, very good race car for the Indy GP coming up in a little bit. That's what we're going to talk about. You mentioned next going to a place that's gone pretty well with you, especially on the Oval. What about the GP up next? What did you learn in the little testing that was done? Yeah, we've always been, been very strong there. I mean, in 2016, that was a place where we really uh, were our most competitive in my rookie year. Um, we led the test there four weeks ago so we, we feel like we have a very strong baseline this this place was always going to kind of be the outlier for us for some reason on the 27 team so um, it's behind us we don't have to think about it anymore and we can go forward and, and focus on the positive things all new this year as far as the Indianapolis 500 is concerned your team has been so strong the last few years you get your first little taste of it next week in a test any idea what you guys have with the common arrow kits Absolutely not. I mean, I'm very excited. Any day that you get to run on the Speedway is a good day. So uh, I think we're all crossing our fingers that, that a lot of what we've done the past couple of years translates. Um, but 
we won't really know until we get out there. We haven't had any time on any super speedway really yet. So um, it's a bit of a mystery, but the, the guys are working so hard back at the shop and, and doing their due diligence to make sure that, you know, the Napa and Jody Honda can be strong there. And, um, you know, I think that we, we did our homework in the off season coming onto street courses and short ovals. So hopefully we can do the same for the speedway. Alexander Rossi survived and finished 11th today, and he's second in the championship, just 13 points back, I think, Marty. A nice place for Simon Pagino, but you were not happy with Gabby Chavez. Kind of walk us through what was going on on the racetrack, and it was during that last run as well. Yeah, well, we had a, we had a really good race going. Uh, I think we potentially could have been in top five, so uh, very frustrated with, uh, with Gabby. He's two laps down, uh, and I just got stuck behind him, uh, which gave an opportunity to Dixon as I was... Uh, trying everything I could to, uh, to make it happen, but um, it's a real shame because when it's not your day, it's just not your day. Um, you'll have better days later, but uh, you want to have everybody on your side when, when you have a good day. And at the moment, he doesn't have me on his side, let me tell you, but uh, it's a real shame. I think the Minards 22 was, was really good from where we started. Uh, strategies with Kai Moyer uh, to go on rain when we went on rain was, was a good choice. And um, uh, yeah, I thought it was a really good pace. We just started from too far back. And we should make the point at the time you were running 10th. He was two laps down. You also had words for him after the race. Did you go see him? And what did you have to say to him? Driver stuff. Oh, driver <laughs> stuff. I love that driver stuff. But, you know, reminding a young driver kind of the position where, you know, like you said, someday it's going to be his day, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've all been there. Um, I, I've been in this position and um, my side, I played it smart. But, um, you know, it is what it is. It's, um, you know, I, I can't come on for him. You could ask him the question, yeah. but um, you know, I'm not going to make too much uh, too much of a deal about it. It's just a shame that it ruined my race. But uh, we'll come back stronger. It's Indy soon, and uh, that's what's going to give me a smile back on my face. Fifteenth in the championship standings right now, and let's put a smile on your face. I know that doesn't put a smile on your face, but Indy test coming up. I know you're excited about that, right? Very much so. The, the new Aero kid's very very cool on oval. It's the cars are fast, fast down the straightaway, a little less grips, so it's sliding more, and I think. Uh, the fact that we're going to see those rear tires moving in the corners is going to be really cool for the fans and, and for the drivers. So um, come to the test. I guess I think it's open, so enjoy it. There you go. So, Katie, a smile on Simon Pagino's face at the end of the day, the month of May, right around the corner. And this is the guy that won this ra that race last year, so I'm sure he's very excited to head into the month of May. But, Takuma, we started a dry race today when yesterday you were really happy in the rain. Do you wish it would have just rained all day today, too? Uh, true. <laughs> and in the end, we had a uh, the wet race, and uh, that really saved me a lot of the paces. It was great. But today, honestly, we were doing a one-stop strategy where the, basically everyone in front of me it was two stopper so if it's a stay dry uh, still we made a significant amount of the position but uh, the shame that I did the, the strategy didn't work but yesterday today both um, wet condition I really enjoyed it and it was an exciting race and uh, hopefully we wish uh, well we wish you uh, finishing high but I think we take it and just a few moments ago we talked to your teammate Graham Rahal and he wanted to thank you because you guys had a great battle but you kind of let him go by how important is that to have that sort of relationship with a teammate? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a teamwork because obviously he was a different strategy. He was two stoppers and I was one stop strategy. So obviously it's no point to do the holding him up and let him go and do charge whatever he can do. And at the end of the day, we didn't know which one is, comes up first. But eventually because it rains, so I had to stop again. That means basic guy give up a few position only because of that. But hey, I mean, that's, that's racing and uh, I don't mind if the, the uh, Graham Ray Hall isn't finishing uh, the both top 10. I think uh, we're happy. And we are heading into the month of May, of course. How important is it to you to defend that title as the Indianapolis 500 champion? And how do you think these RLL cards are going to be? Well, I think it's exciting things, isn't it? I think I'm very excited and very up for, up for it. And uh, how important? I don't know. Obviously, it's, it's uh, anybody for the winning for the 500. It's extremely important. I think for the guys, it's a, such a pumped up situation going to as a defending champion. So I'm really thrilled for it. And if we can pull out on the second win, of course, it's fantastic. But that's really dream of the dream. But I think we will try, of course. All right, Robin, from last year's winner to a guy that's won it four times. All right, Matt Lee had a nice run today. Kept it clean, made the boss happy, and now he's heading to Indy. Did you want it to rain, or were you happy with the dry, or just talk about your weekend? I was happy with the dry. I mean, uh, we had a, we struggled a little bit in practice, so I think we made some great progress to, to the race today. And uh, I was feeling good driving with the Reds today. The car was fast. We are gaining some position, so I was happy with the pace. And then uh, I started the race. I thought we would be okay as well, but we just had a little bit too much on this year, so 
we struggle a little bit but anyway still our, our best finish in the season so far so I'm happy with the performance and uh, looking forward to the May. And the four of the four tracks you've been to so far, this probably the toughest to learn? Uh, yeah, I think so. Long Beach was tough as well because I haven't been Long Beach till the the race we can. And then uh, I raced here last year, but anyway, still a different car, different team and everything. The beginning was tough, but I think uh, from where we started, it was a very good weekend. All right. Tex. This kid looks pretty brave and pretty good. Now, you're going to take him to India. You're going to tell him to go out and go crazy and go wild and go fast or just going to be pacing him? Well, you know why he's fast? No. I was young at one time myself. You were? <laughs> well, that was about 50 years ago. Uh, about 60. Okay. 70. But he, he does seem to have the capacity to go fast pretty quick. Well, he's looking real good. I'm kind of proud of him. And he's working good with my son, Larry, and all that. He's calling him. So, like I told him, if y'all stayed out two more laps, you'd probably run in the top ten. But... You know, who can predict rain when it's coming like that? So they put the rain tires on because it was drizzling, but it hurt him a couple of laps, probably 12, 15 seconds. But you got, you don't know. It's, you're right one time, next time you're wrong. He went really fast to Phoenix, had a couple of moments where he almost hit the wall and didn't. But at Indy, are you just going to stress, brother, this is all about respect? Well, that's right. And I think he's very, the biggest thing I like about him, very smooth. And that's how you run fast at Indy, being smooth. All right. He knows his driver's name, Lee. He, names, he calls him Matt. He, he signs his check, Matt. I think we've made great, great progress with this man. <laughs> Lee? <laughs> Two great characters together right there on screen. Super Techs, AJ Foyt and our Robin Miller. And when we come back, we'll wrap things up on what's been an eventful and lengthy weekend. Back at Barber Motorsports Park, we mentioned the little chat between Simon Pagano and Gabby Chavez there. Matt Weaver of Auto Week shooting this video that we have uh, now provided for you. And a little heated argument there. We found Gabby Chavez here. And uh, what's your side of this whole story, Gabby? I, you know, it's a tough situation, right? Overnight, we had an early uh, pit stop in the first part of the race before you know, we got postponed. We lost that fuel advantage we had overnight because everyone got to refuel. And it put us in a tough situation. We have to restart a lap down, right? So our whole strategy depends on trying to get a yellow and holding our track position, right? And some guys think that the track belongs to the, only them, right? That they're the only guys on track. Hmm. And everyone else who was faster at, at that point, I was only a lap down two liters. So we're still on our strategy, right? We don't know what's going to happen. Um, at that point, everyone who's faster, as soon as they got right up next to me that were on the lead lap, I'd let them go. Simon was the only one who couldn't drive up, drive up to me. Mm. And I understand his frustration, but I mean, he's, he's the one who has to save fuel to make his strategy work. That's not our fault, right? Right. So there you go. That's the side of the story from Gabby Chavez. He did tell me, though, I'm excited for the month of May, ready to move on from the beginning of the season, Lee. Marty, thank you very much. And guys, as our Robin Miller says, anger is good. Rivalry is good. That was was kind of spirited, wasn't it? I thought Chavez did a good job explaining himself and simply said, hey, we were on our strategy. Pagano, you had to get next to me. I would have let you by, but he wasn't able to do it. Again, Pagano had to save fuel, so that's that's how it rolls sometimes, Paul. Yeah, I remember, too, his guys in his pit area, Al Jr., Barnhart, you got old-school IRL guys that like to scrap a little bit and get in the mix, so I see his point for sure. So here are the unofficial results of the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Well documented, the podium getters. What a day for Schmidt, Peterson Motorsports. By the way, that's James Hinchcliffe's first podium since his home race in Toronto last year. And his teammate Robert Wickens followed it up. It didn't quite go Zach Veach's way, as we've already detailed. And it was a troublesome weekend for Carlin. Look at that. They're two cars finishing back there in 22nd and 23rd. But Will, uh, Will Power, who was ahead of them, did get uh, nine points. And speaking of those nine points, it keeps Will Power in the top ten not where he wants to be, and Joseph Newgarden takes over the lead. How about Robert Wickens jumping up four spots in the championship, so it's going to get really good as we head to the month of May. Yeah, so the beginning part of the season has been very interesting, and now all the focus goes to the month of May. Hey, coming up next, it's Premier League Live, followed by Everton versus Newcastle, and be sure to join us Friday, speaking of the month of May, May 25th at 11 a.m. Eastern for all the fun of Carb Day from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And for all the extra information you might need on the Verizon IndyCar Series, head to NBCSports.com. It was a fun, lengthy, controversial and entertaining weekend here in Alabama. Thanks for watching and we congratulate Joseph Newgarden.